It's uh, 7.30 on February 26, 2020. Uh, we'll convene the Conservation Committee meeting. Uh, at 7.30, we're starting a little bit later than our usual time, but uh, we'll uh, get moving. The meeting is being presented on RCTV, uh, Comcast 22, Verizon 33. The video is also available on RCTV website. Uh, thanks to the hard work of our administrator, Chuck, the documents for most of these projects are also available on the Conservation Division web page. So if you go to the, the page, you can find all the ongoing projects and uh, stuff that's been submitted. Uh, stuff that's been submitted by the applicants. There's a sign-in sheet at the door. If you haven't signed in, please do. Uh, and we'll start with our first, uh, the first item on the agenda. It's a continued public hearing for a notice of intent for 135, 139. 149 Howard Street, map 10, lot 75, 76, 77, DEP file number 270714. Uh, this time I'll introduce the commission starting on my right. David Panette. Martha Moore. Anika Scanlon, vice chair. Michael Flynn, chair. Nicola Mazur. Tay Evans. John Sullivan. Chuck Taroni, conservation administrator. Okay, before we start, I think it's worth just kind of giving a little bit of recap of what we what happened last meeting. So last meeting, the applicant presented their um, the most recent uh, plans. The commission had a chance to you know respond to the question. In addition to that, our third party reviewer, Horsley Winton, uh, gave us their feedback and review. In addition, went over their February 10th memo that included recommendations, review things, uh, conditions to include um, on the order of conditions. Um, we also heard from the public. They had provided a memo regarding some questions. And I think at the end, we had five or six items, essentially, that, that we had said we were looking to, to hear that included the retaining walls outside the 35 foot, um, something at the cul-de-sac associated with uh, snow protection and the, the steep slope in that area. Uh, an operation and maintenance manual for each homeowner, uh, a pipe in the drainage area, uh, a response to comments from the to the uh, public's memo, and then on our end, we were looking for a review from the engineering department. Tell me, I'll let you present what you've, you've sent us since then, and tell me if I missed anything. Uh, so, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, Andy Street, civil design consultants. Um, I believe you just took my presentation. <laughs> um, but, but no, I think everything you said is accurate, and that's what we walked away with, and uh, that's really what we uh, addressed. I mean, we added a uh, under drain into the infiltration basin, that main one up in lot four. Uh, those walls you mentioned, there was one at the driveway in lot four that is now just gone. We graded it out three to one slope. Um, there was a uh, wall in lot three that was really just there to uh, have a more level area around that house. Yep. Um, and that has been modified to pull that out of the 35 foot uh, zone. Um, so the wall exists, it's just outside of the 35, unlike lot four where it's just totally gone. Okay. Uh, the, the, at the end of the cul-de-sac, there was the questions about snow and also the uh, how steep that proposed slope was. Uh, it was steeper than three to one. So what we did back there, looks like Chuck's pulling up now, but what we did back there is make that a three to one slope and that still fits without disturbing the 25 foot uh, zone of natural vegetation. So that's there. Um, re regarding snow, I think one thing we didn't really talk about is that between the uh, pavement, uh, the curb line with the cul-de-sac and the actual right of ways, it's actually 15 feet there. Um, so th it's a decent sized area, I think, to be pushing some snow anyway. And then you have that slope, which will now be three to one to kind of let things infiltrate. So you've got the curb, you've got 15 feet, which will be pitched towards the roadway. And then you've got that slope. Um, and, and my intention would be uh, if we can work with the tree warden in one form or another to make sure they don't plant a tree kind of right in the middle there, we should have a decent sized area, 50 or 60 feet by by 15 feet to allow for, for snow there. Um, we, we had some discussions, some ideas were kicked around with the town engineer um, signage or guardrail or, or, or something like that. And he, he really did not want to see that. I think there's just a, the questions of ownership and if it's damaged and something else to own and maintain, That was those were kind of his concerns, at least as they were 
expressed to me. So um, that's what we did in that area. Uh, in the packets we submitted, we did prepare uh, individual O&M plans uh, customized for each lot. So um, at a minimum, it talks about the roof drywall system, how to maintain that, when, things like that. <coughs> Uh, the lot four mentions the infiltration basin specifically saying that that's the towns and they'll be maintaining it. And then the lots <clears throat> one and uh, two, I believe, are the two with the swales, really. Uh, the lots with swales in the backyard, it mentions those and how those shall not be disturbed and need to remain and critical for the drainage system and things like that. Uh, we, we did, we submitted a full response to that butter letter that was, I can't remember the date on that, but when that came in, when we had that, uh, that letter was fully addressed and we submitted our response letter to that as well. That was from January 6th, that, that letter from the abutters. So there's a response letter to all the concerns outlined in, in that letter. Um, and, and then we have a clean memo which came in, I think just yesterday, that the uh, town engineer weighed in and, and seemed to indicate that things had been uh, properly addressed on his end. So now we've got a clean letter from him for the planning, uh, the CPDC, and then also one for, for this commission as well. Uh, I, I think that's kind of a, the highlights. I mean, really to this point, we've we've um, we've addressed everything that Horsey Witten has put before us. There's still a few mentions in their letter of maybe some special conditions the commission might want to consider, but as far as technical comments, plan changes, things like that, we've addressed them. Um, we've we've uh, hit on every comment from the town engineer. I think we've hit on everything from this commission. So um, I believe we're in a position to, to close this and, and see where it goes from there. But I, you know, happy to continue discussion in whatever whatever form this commission would like uh, tonight. Okay. Up to the rest of the commission, do you guys have any other questions or any? I have a question. Yeah. Um, what are the two little HP? Numbers next to them in the middle of the, um, the road there. Which plan are you looking at? So C seven, for example, and maybe in other ones too. But like in the middle of the cul-de-sac, there are these little um, little areas. I wonder if they're vegetated areas. Or no, it, it's just designating a high point. So oh. the road it comes it comes up from the street and back down to the catch basins, kind of midway through the street section, comes back up to a high point that's right kind of at the beginning of the cul-de-sac, and then back down to the catch basins at the at the um, oh, okay. in the catch so basins. That so that's just how the roadway is. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. yeah, we so the the subdivision regs actually call for a landscaped island in the cul-de-sac, mm -hmm. and that's something that the the DPW really they, they don't like to see them at all, and they kind of push this away from it because plows. Just have trouble when they get damaged and are maintained, and like so it's just all pavement through the through the roadway. So the plow, they couldn't use that for. You were talking about pushing snow, but if you had the vegetated area, they would have to plow over that. Or I, you, you could probably talk to them more about their concerns, but we we showed up. Um, at the what's it, DRT meeting, which is kind of the kickoff with the town administration, and that was one of their first comments was, was please don't, we don't like those. It, it's just, it's a maintenance thing. And you know, at 2 a.m., those guys are, or those people are trying to plow and they're just smashing the curb and, and things like that. So, fire department, yeah, I think same, same thing. Yeah, yep. I had a couple of. Uh, Comments. I, look, I was I focused a little bit on the O and M plan for the lots, um, and I mean I can, uh, I'll just sort of by lot. Um, in lot one, uh, based on public comments from the last meeting, I I was I was wondering if this would be a good place to put in. The maintenance of the grass swale um, on the left side, on the uphill side of the property. Um, I was wondering if, you know, this was a good place to put in maintenance of the grass swale, you know, something similar to what you had on lot two, the wording you had for maintenance of the swale, um, because it's labeled on the plan as a sure. swale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about that getting added to lot one and 
Um, in the scenario we talked about. Yeah. yeah, and if yeah. you don't have any comments, I'll move to lot two. Yeah, no, that's that's totally fine. Yeah, no, that's that should okay. be in there. <coughs> Certainly, that's um, condition. We can make that tweak. Yeah. One of the things I I saw about lot two that I I wanted to bring up was um, that pipe inlet. Um, management of that pipe inlet. Um, I imagine, you know, if we could put, I imagine that the property owner is going to be mowing. Debris is going to build up in the low area, always does. Wind, mown debris, it always happens. Uh, creatures, etc. cetera. Um, I was thinking of maybe putting into the O&M plan some sort of, you know, periodic clearance of that pipe inlet. Yep. Um, cleared of debris on a regular basis, you know, twice a year, yep. sort of in the same. So just to make sure that that drainage pipe doesn't get buried, because it's it's pipes like that that are built really with a lot of thought and a lot of, to, and a lot of um, intent. However, the ongoing maintenance makes it ineffective. Sure. Always does. I mean, how many pipes have we said, oh, wait, is there a pipe on there? What was it for? What was it supposed to function as and and is it cracked is it damaged just been buried um just buried by grass even you know grass can really grow around it so i just want to say that so the same about lot three about maintenance of the pipe outlet because that's the outlet okay. um and if i'm not moving too fast moving on to lot Four. Um, I wanted to sort of talk a little bit about maintenance of the infiltration basin. Um, there, I mean, there's a good sentence there. It says, under no circumstances shall the owner of Lot 4 alter the basin in any way. Um, and I just want to open this up to the commission for, dis for discussion. You too, Chuck. Maybe to include... Don't alter it, meaning uh, kept empty, keep other items out of it. <laughs> um, you know, who's, I guess part of my question is who's going to mow that? Who's going to, some, some real, you know, landscaping minded resident is going to say, I'm going to go and I'm going to mow it all the time. Whereas, typically, we ask the DPW, the town, to take over the management of that swale. What ends up happening is maybe the DPW can get to it, maybe they can't. I don't know. I don't have good information. Maybe, Chuck, you could chime in about how the DPW has been doing, like, yeah. for example, on Bethune. Like, did they, have they been... Let me just ask a question to Andy. Uh, the swales are not going to be, they're not in an easement, so the town won't be taking care of them. That was my understanding. These swales, like this behind lot one, 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 two, and things, yeah, two. no, those are, those are private. Those are yeah. up to the private homeowners to take care of in any form, so it has to be in the order of conditions. That's the swale. Yeah. What about the infiltration basin? The infiltration basin, um... May I offer you a suggestion? That... Sure. The place you're looking for maintenance, the infiltration um, basin, that's on a particular homeowner's lot. It should be put right into their own implement that they're required to do. She's talking about the one on the This is what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That one will be, uh, and it's, it is in the, it's in, in the, what was written notes, um, that will be taken over by the town. The one on lot four, right there on the screen. So it's Horsley Witten's understanding that that is take, being taken over by the town. Yeah, that. <coughs> is that your understanding? Yeah, that's that's in an easement that, that's shown in the plan. So it's stormwater easement okay. granted to the town. Let me make sure so, that so one, what, two, and three, uh, lots one, so, two, and three. So are we okay? So how does the town? So I guess what I'm saying is, how does what do we want? How do we want that maintained? And how do we codify that? So, with so the hold, town I'm going to pause resident. for a second. I need yeah. to, so I'll, I'll just confirm with. I'm wrong. Okay. Let's just keep that simple. Besides what so, my son says, in fact, is true. I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> so if, if I so there is a uh, the operations maintenance plan that's in the drainage report that we've been submitting does talk about 
maintenance procedures for that pump. So it's specific, okay. specifically left out of these because it's not okay. on the homeowner. These are supposed to go kind okay. of with the deed or some form yeah. like that. Okay. Um, but the o and plan that's kind of carried throughout this has talked about maintenance uh, of the pond, and that's all per uh, just DP's guidance and standards and regular mowing and things like that. Okay. Should it be within this to contact the town if there are issues, though? Because it, it is uh, you know, some sort of indication that within the infiltration basin section that... I think I, it may help from, from conservation's perspective it may, I'm just suggesting it may be helpful to give the resident a, maybe a list of expectations regarding that basin in this plan. I, maybe it's redundancy, you know, if something's already. Um, I think if it's, if it's being taken over by the town, you can't have an expectation for the homeowner. They can... Right. I think the, I think we would be more than welcome if they wanted to mow and manage it, that they do that because they will generally get to it more often than the town will. Exactly. But I don't think we can set an <clears throat> expectation. I mean, I think what what I'm saying is like, if if it doesn't flood often, you know, if I've seen some of these basins, and I know it's probably not going to happen here because of how the you know, the creatures um, within the basin are, are going to be. I've seen people put swing sets in there. I've seen people, you know, and I just want to make sure that the whoever's living there understands what's allowable in that basin and what is not allowable in that basin. We can add a yeah, sentence right. to it saying that it will be maintained by the town but there will be no structures allowed to be installed within the basin. This no is a drainage. tables, no. Right. Yeah. No. That's, that's no. not a problem. We no temporary that. outdoor. That's Just sense. so sense. that it's Swing clear sets or. That there's no structures, swing sets. Yeah. Above ground pools. I don't know. Oh, well, I don't know. Right. I mean, <coughs> people get creative. They do. And sometimes people, especially if they don't, if they buy a lot and they maybe they don't have the ideal <clears throat> large backyard they want. Maybe they'll see that detention basin and go, what's well, my property? I got a little bit more room over here. I mean, I know it's kind of ridiculous, but um, <laughs> I've seen some interesting things happen. I think that's a good solution. So we can do this. That's no problem. <clears throat> and then to, to your point, um, Ms. Chen, you have the last sentence talks about contacting um, okay. DPW yeah. and or conservation, yeah. and we could add num phone number, you know what I mean? We could beat yeah. that up too if, if that's if you think that'd be more effective too. I think the more <clears throat> reader friendly, more likely the resident's going to follow it. Sure. Yeah. So those were my comments. Any others? I'll uh, open it up to the public. Any comments from the, the public? Just ask the issue of the PDF talk. Uh, I just want to make sure that the board be written comments on the uh, on the bedding, not to the to the uh, into the roads. Yeah. So, good question. We have Chuck was kind enough to break out here uh, what was included. And uh, the Horsley Winton report as things that we need to incorporate into the an order of conditions, um, and and certainly we don't have an order prepared, but it's it's items that we uh, want to Chuck, I don't know if you have got it up on the screen there. Yep. Second, pull it out. Second. Under storm water. Storm oh, storm water. Include existing soil. Yeah. So we've got an item that. Associated with placing that, but it's something that flows well. So if I might just build up that too, the, yeah. the, the the soils that we found and the the exfiltration rate we're designed for is that 2.41. So that's what we're expecting. I think that comment from Orsi Witten originated when they we did some more test pits and there were these kind of pockets of worse material than than what we what we had seen in other places. So we certainly don't have a problem with this condition. I just wanted to point out that we're expecting it to perform at that rate. Uh, and then, you know, if something 
field conditions change, you know, an isolated location where you're digging that you can't foresee, then, you know, we replace it with that material. So in line with that, uh, who, what's the process when that's being constructed? Who's out there looking at the material to, to make that decision in the field that, yes, we, we've got a, a really coarse grain material that can flow versus, oh, we, we happen to find some, you know, a fine grain pocket. Uh, this is an area that needs to be replaced. You know, how does that... It's great when we have it on paper. Sure. Uh, you know, how does that act, make sure that actually gets done when, it, when it's being built? Well, I, I would think it's someone like me. Yeah. You know, whether it's actually me or if some, you know, whoever's building this, the contractor has their own, so, you know, person who's qualified to evaluate soils and, and understands how these basins function and things and, like that. And that'd likely be something that we could put in the condition yeah, that no we, issue with we that. want. We sure. want somebody with that that skill set out there to observe yeah. and, and not just. You know, someone sure. digging a hole and say, yeah, 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 it was fine. I built it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And just one other point too, that that basin, we're, we're only taking like six inches. You know, it's not it's not like we're digging ten feet. Yeah. And then so you know, there's all of this is fine. You know, I just wanted <coughs> to call attention to a couple of things about that basin in particular. So. Mike, uh, the second bullet up from the bottom actually mentions the to discuss how often an engineer should be out there and for what parts guys in uh, well, the digital exactly comments. What, the, what it says. The digital <laughs> comments. Yeah, that's exactly what it says. So installation of inf infiltration practices will be witnessed by a professional engineer and document that uh, will be provided to the commission stating that it was installed for the design. So um, that's exactly what we're saying. Um, I mean, as far as the Drainage goes installation impulse. So what? Maybe it's not fair to ask you, Chuck. Infiltration practices be witnessed. What was? What consists of infiltration practices? Just a basin? Uh, we were having a similar discussion. I, I'm not sure. Let's uh, bring Andy into this. Yeah. And, uh, and so during this operation, how often would you be there if it was you? was the engineer that wanted to make sure that your design uh, was going to work. Yeah, I mean, I think that... Can I well, answer that for a moment? Um, this condition is something that I think you want to fine-tune, um, sort of like writing condition in public is harder than if you can dialogue about it. I think you want someone, someone present to observe the conditions when they're actually doing it in a way that allows the engineer to certify that it was done in compliance with your order. And you put into the prior condition what you were just discussing about what you want for an infiltration rate. And you tie the two together, not with an answer now about exactly how often it'll be the engineer on site, but it has to be his professional license on the line. That he's, he's seen enough himself or someone <coughs> he knows has seen it that he can certify. Did that make sense? Whether you agree or not, did it make sense? Sure. So, uh, so I, I can I, let you know that uh, when we did uh, Reading Woods, uh, and the Chandra's um, engineer came out after they dug the hole, and he did um, he did his uh, tests at that point, and uh, he came back periodically af after that point just to make sure. So he wanted to verify that he got his infiltration rate. Yeah. And then, he, you know, he wasn't there when they were doing the other stuff. So yeah. and maybe that's what how you were going to answer. Yeah. But yeah, that's exactly. I mean, that, this is this isn't a huge base, right? So we want to see the bottom. We want to see when it's the bottom elevations obtained and, and make sure that soil's good. And then you know, there's also an as built at the end. So you know, we can visit periodically, but it will be captured in an as built. And we we just as kind of general practice because these things are so important. That those whatever the storm water, surface stormwater control is, I mean, that gets a very detailed approach to make sure it's the right size, the right depth, you know, all that, all that kind of thing. Yep. The four bays in there, so that would get captured at the end as well. So you kind of have construction checks, and then there's the yeah. big picture in the as built that you can make sure that it was built per plan. Well, yeah, ultimately, the as built is the end of what we're saying here is right. the, the documentation from you saying, right. yes, it was right. built in accordance. So right. that's an, uh, one of the conditions in the order that we're going to have to review at the next meeting. Okay. Make sure we have it right. Okay. Thanks. Suzanne Algeri, I just have a quick question around um, the management of that pipe that you, you were describing. It sounded like the 
Uh, what lot? Is that pipe <coughs> pipe on? On? So there is a pipe on lot to Chuck. I don't know if you have the O and M. Yeah. Yeah, I do. So lot two. There is an inlet. I think you're rich there. So you can see it on the right side. There's a So, no, no, that's perfect. That, as indicated in the O&M, that is to be managed by the homeowner. The, the only thing that is being taken over by the town is the infiltration basin on lot four, is my understanding. Is it underground pipe? Like, how, how would someone maintain that? Correct. So, it's the inlet that we're asking to be maintained. So, the there's where it ends right there, and you see the black dot. Yeah. That's where water can get in and travel underneath directly where does that di that discharges lot three the next lot mm -hmm. yeah. out towards the well yeah. does it have some sort of a grill on the front to keep like big things from plugging it up it, yeah does it have screening or anything we're not proposing that right now but certainly something that could be applied yeah I think that would be a good idea yeah, prevent you from getting in there I'm just okay. thinking, like, if it's the right size, a soccer ball could go right in, and yeah. then you don't have a pipe anymore. Yeah. You know, the, the only downside to grates is that that means the leaves can get caught easier, you know, that it actually gets clogged faster, you know, just... So it gets clogged at the inlet. Well, that's true. But, but at least not down the pipe. Right, down right, the pipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so a homeowner yeah. has an easier time going up to an inlet, right. removing leaves from right. that location. Yeah. They have a more difficult time. They've got to call somebody to actually clean out a pipe right. segment if leaves are getting in that in that manner. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I would always go for the, the solution that is A, it's obvious, right? The right. things are building up and right in that location. And B is a much easier Totally thing. fine, yeah. And you know it is it's just a twelve inch pipe too. So it's we're not talking about a just to put some you know more perspective, it's not a big culvert or anything like that. What was that? Yeah. And then my second question is around the um, maintenance of the infiltration basin as it relates to the town. What are the expectations for maintenance? Um, I know you mentioned that the town will get to it perhaps, but do they have requirements of, of what they need to do to maintain that area? Is that set forth as an expectation? So within the O and M manual, right. there's indication of the so there's O and M's for each property, but within the O and M manual, there's the, uh, for the overall drainage facility, there's right. guidance within that. Yeah, and that that guidance is uh, you know that's that's what the state and I assume this commission follows as well. That's that's from the DEP, so that's the expectation. You know, if if these things are built, and, you know, then it needs to be maintained this way, and that's. If the town is going to take ownership of the whole, the whole road and facilities, then they, they would be responsible for maintaining it in DEPs. If any homeowners have concerns that it's not operating correctly, they can always call the local DPW, put a call in, say, hey, this hasn't been maintained, there's trees growing in it, can you get somebody out here? So I think that's a great point, and, and that's exactly what, just so, because the citizens here are the ones that would be watching and concerned, you know, when we're talking about mowing, we're talking about, as we discussed, leaving it open. Are there any other major thing? I mean, I'm, I'm fairly well aware, but to see if it, it still builds up, yeah. um, if trash starts to compile, you know, there's this things, things like that can affect the function. Oh, for sure. To give the town yeah, a call absolutely. and say, hey, yeah. you, you guys should come out and take a look at this. Right. Absolutely. So I, I'm just going to ask you one question. Uh, so obviously when this is built, there's going to be a certain amount of time that the town is not in charge of these uh, practices. So uh, is that usually two years or so? And then they accept the road at town meeting, right? So yeah, it's a, a pretty formal question. situation. Right. So there's going to be a bit of time for the homeowners are going to be calling who? Contractor? It would be the owner of the project at the time. I mean, there's certainly if there's a contractor Who's going to there. maintain... Who maintains uh, the roadways until the it gets turned over. And this uh, detention basin during, let's say, that two-year period. 
Well, I, I think, yeah, one, it would depend on the length of time between those. You know, I think that can vary depending on how the project proceeds. And if it goes long enough, you, it's a private road, remains a private road, and then it's fully built out and people live in the homes. We talk about other measures to bought into that sort of thing if there's no I'm, owner of the project anymore. I'm, much like much like if this were just any other project and there something was going wrong, somebody's gonna call Q or the DPW and we're gonna have a permit, right? <clears throat> Does the permit close until it gets turned over like a, a, a we don't have anything to do with that process. Yeah. Um, and so I don't even know how that works. I mean maybe the road could be finished well before our stuff is finished and the right. houses are finished. I'm not sure if that's how it goes, but. Well, I would think until a certificate of compliance is issued, there's a name on the on the order as well, mm -hmm. right? That that person, this is in the buffer zone, that person's responsible for, uh, person or entity, is unless it changes hands, you know, that whoever's on the order is responsible for, for maintaining. For respectfully, I'm gonna have to give right. a legal answer. Whoever owns the land, the order of conditions runs with the land, and name on the order condition matters until there's a certificate of compliance but if that person no longer owns the land the owner of the land has to do what's in the order and so I would suggest you draft the order knowing that there's a time period when there may be an owner of the land that is not yet the DPW I mean who knows if your town meeting does something strange and doesn't exactly. take it so put it put it in that it runs the land. Sure. Um, I had a question about um, about the underdrain um, in the detention basin. Um, can you just sort of further describe um, how it's constructed and how you expect it to function? So the underdrain is a perforated pipe that will be surrounded with stone. Um, and it'll get attached to the s concrete tank? Correct, yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll like as an overflow or something? Correct, or? yeah. So it'll be in the in the basin, and then it will uh, have the opportunity to outlet into the outlet control structure, which is on that on the west side of the basin there. Um, it, it has a valve on it, so it's... You know, if it were open all the time, then the basin wouldn't perform as we designed it to. It would, it, water would just keep running through it, which would impact the amount of water the wetland receives and, and things like that. Um, so there's a valve on it, and it's really there in the event that, I don't know, something goes wrong. If you have a, a free cycle followed by a large rainstorm and nothing's getting in the ground, you can go, and that, that can be something that can help relieve um, you know, issues with the pond itself. Or, or, you know, it could be a long passage of time, and the things... It hasn't been cleaned regularly. You know, there's a lot of reasons why something could not happen, and now you have this opportunity to use that to um, to help get water out of there and have it maintain function. Okay. One um, one thing about that um, that outlet structure, I'm just sort of imagining if this is constructed and it's a wet spring and a wet summer. Um, I guess one question I have, and maybe Chuck, you could answer it, is if residents get concerned that um, standing water inside of this outlet structure becomes an inadvertent breeding ground for more mosquitoes or something like that, is, is that something that we should anticipate? Is this, is the, this outlet structure, is this going to be... I guess I'm just trying to understand, is this going to be, is this going to have standing water, do you think, much of the year? Is it going to, I'm asking you to predict. Yeah, so, so part of the design is to make sure this drains in a uh, maximum of 72 hours. So if it has water longer than 72 hours, it's not performing. And I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the numbers with me. I wasn't expecting to go down this road necessarily, so I don't have the calculation. But we're expecting this to drain in far less than that amount of time. Um, but 72 hours is, it's not supposed to hold water for more than three, <coughs> at a maximum three days. Okay. So, so you're anticipating that whatever standing water is left below the, in, the inlet and outlet pipes, that 48 inches is going to evaporate. It's going to infiltrate. I mean, the whole idea of this thing is to yeah, yeah, you just to get as much water into the ground as possible.
if it's concrete, is there is there is there a permeable base? Yes. Because I, it looks like it's all concrete to me. Are you talking about in the structure itself? Yeah. So in the structure itself, the idea is that inside you, that concrete. Yeah, I, I would have to look at how often we actually. Th there's not a lot of water here. Is, is one thing. So I, I'd have to look yeah. at how much water we're even expecting to leave that outlet. It's not a lot. Um, but inside that, that's really to allow just like a catch basin for sediment to right. to, to fall out and, and could be maintained just the same way as a catch basin, open up the grate and clean it out. So if it is holding water there, then it, it could be cleaned out that way with the sediment and things like that. But I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not, I, I have to look at the numbers again to know how much water actually even enters that structure because we've got... What is it, A to C? You know, is it two feet between the bottom of the pond and just getting into that structure? That's the overflow, right? Yeah, the vast so, majority of the storm events, it's all going into the ground. So, yeah, I'm just trying to do a little bit of like three dimensional picturing for this. So, the water that goes into there is going to come in from the, I'm looking at D2, um, the bottom design structures on D2. So the water that goes into that is going to come from rainfall from above and from the perforated underdrain. If open. Yeah. If if there's water if there's groundwater there. Or it's going to come in through that G diameter orifice. Correct. So and then <laughs> Bear with me. And then the uh, then the outlet pipe is going to go, and remind me the, the, the grade, it goes from, because the outlet invert is 160. Is it basically a flat, what's the grade on that pipe between the outlet structure and the 35 foot or the 25 foot line? Uh, it's half percent. Very, very shallow. Oh, there it is. I yeah. see it. Half percent. So it's relatively flat. Yeah, I guess I was just... Since the sump of that... The elevation between the base of that outlet pipe and the bottom of the concrete structure, it's labeled on the plan as 48 inches. So there's going to be... I guess I'm just wondering, like, how much standing water is going to just sort of remain in there. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's really, you're talking about a, a standard catch basin almost. You know, a catch basin has a 48-inch sump, so it's a very similar situation. Okay. You know, it gives the opportunity for sediments to come out, and, you know, the, you see it around town, the mosquito people come, and they, throw, they put a little green dot on the, you know, you could do something like that if there's a concern, I would think, you know. Um, but it's it's basically a catch basin structure yeah, yeah. that can be cleaned the same way. Sure. Okay, and, well, it, I'll give you a second just give me so the so the benefit of it being impervious at the bottom is that it is a quasi storage device in times of real peak flows you'd have a little bit of storage I suppose. you'd have a little bit additional storage yeah. yeah okay i just wanted to make sure since this is kind of like a little critical piece of the design and how the storm water interacts with the wetlands just wanted to make sure. Sure. I just that point. I just wanted to add that that wetland, the large bordering vegetated wetland, it does hold standing water. So if the right. mosquitoes were a concern, the wetland is holding much more water and mosquitoes in that area. Do you know if the? No. I can go there. <laughs> All right. Are there any other questions? Um, I just want to backtrack a little bit on the last uh, meeting that was here with the third uh, independent party. You mentioned some of the model that they used to come up with their numbers uh, as far as uh, the drainage and the uh, rainwater. Um, and she mentioned that there were two different models that that were used and sort of what was drafted was an older model and sort of what is going to be used in a, a 
lot of other styles of inputs are can you use a different model that style is more accurate? And I'm just curious if you can speak to that because I really don't is that know. The mounting? No. This is this is uh, uh, a the common storm thing that we get stormwater calculations. Rainfall it's events. it's about rainfall events. Is there, uh, it came up towards the end. So, what that is is there's two, uh, uh, in effect, two numbers of, of what the design storm would be. How many inches of rain would fall? As a, which which one is them? Um, oh, don't don't quote me. Yeah. It's it's to meet their stormwater management permit that they had to file the MS four. It's it's a certain rainstorm. There is newer data out there that has greater rain rainfall intensities in, intensities. Uh, this town does not requ currently require uh, people to meet that number, those the, this larger rainfall event. So it's essentially what, what it says is a uh, 100-year storm, this many inches would fall. There's another piece of data out there that says for that same storm, possibly an extra inch falls or an inch and a half falls. Uh, so let, me, let me ask you, so the other one that is greater is the more accurate up-to-date model. So, it, for an area that has a lot of water issues, I feel like using the more up-to-date, accurate model for stormwater numbers would be, I understand you do you can potentially do the bare minimum of what's required or what the regulations are, but I feel like this commission would have the opportunity to uh, require, you know, as conservative as, as, as you can go with, with the numbers and the model being used, if you have that authority to do that, um, you know, I know it wouldn't be ideal for the applicant, but you know, to for all the neighboring um, residents, water is a huge issue clearly for everybody. So, just um, using the most accurate, uh, up to date model that has the most accurate information, that's more water and more rainfall. I feel like is. So I'll give my own personal thing. I would, in general, agree. It's a more conservative number. I think you could argue, at, you know, I think engineers often argue the accuracy of it. It's definitely the more conservative number. Unfortunately, what what is occurring right now is that both of them meet standard practice. Um, and our pra or, you know, in this town, in, in general, our standard practice has been to accept that number. That is something that... As, as a commission, we're trying to work on getting town-wide. Nika is actually is one of the largest proponents we have for this of like getting our, us to to you know use this more conservative number because people see that storms are increasing. But I don't. My personal take is I don't know that it's we've allowed others to get through with that because it's the standard that we've set here um, until we get on on. Our, our act together as a town and make that the standard. I don't know that we can ask specific applicants to meet that. What would that have to do with the area as well? I mean, if it's generally a, a, a drier area, I mean, this is an area that's extremely wet to begin with, and that's a major, if not the major, concern of the surrounding neighbors. So I feel like that would be the exception that you would potentially make to um, require those new up to date models. Especially, you know, I understand the planning, they have the right to, uh, you know, have these buildings and these lots for whoever, you know, owns it. But I guess this commission would be um, more directed towards, you know, the writings for people who don't you know, like you would have the authority to require that. Yeah. Or make that exception, exception for this. We could only ask if it's not in our regulations. We can't do. We can't make them uh, uh, designed to a higher standard than, than what's in our regulations. And I think that number comes from the engineering department. It does. So it's, uh, they're getting that number from the engineering department. One of the things we could do is if they only designed. Uh, to the 20 year storm, we could ask them to design to the 100 year storm using the same numbers. That they've done that. 
And I, I, I just make a comment. One of the things is, is this is also you're talking about a hundred year storm. We're talking the, to, talking about the two different paradigms for the number, of, the the quantity of water. When you're talking about a hundred year storm, the difference between the two paradigms, everyone's in trouble. Everyone's flooding when you're talking about the two differences in water. So whether you're talking about the current standard or the, the other standard that you're talking about, everyone's flooded in either 100-year storm. So whether you design for one or the other, you're still going to be in trouble with the water that falls. So I guess that was my understanding. I didn't know if it was just the absolute max or it's just a complete shift of you know, no. this model is just a more accurate, heavier rainfall that's more up-to-date. I will. I will comment that, um, and I hope this isn't. I hope. I hope I'm not. You know, it's not my intent to throw engineering under. You know, under the bus. They do. They do a lot of hard work. Um, my sense, and this is my, based on a couple of discussions I've had um, with engineering, um, is that they have an understanding of the town-wide drainage systems, right? So they know, they know the storm, they know the size of the pipes generally and the age of the pipes in all the streets. They've got that understanding. They know, they have an understanding of where there's a lot of clogging because the pipes are too small. You follow? And they also have understanding of where maybe we need to improve the catch basins, or maybe we need to build in more um, storage under, you know, what we would call an infiltration basin, a place where all the stormwater can go into and just be held for a little while before going back out into the environment. That kind of delays the rush of water that comes, you know what I mean? Kind of slowing down that delivery time. So they've got, they've got an understanding of the, the drainage town wide. And I think in some situations when I've had a discussion with them to sort of say, look, I'm concerned about more extreme storm weather events. All the models predict more extreme weather and we're seeing more extreme weather. I think what, Chuck, I think if you remember a number five years ago plus, there was the Mother's Day storm, okay, which um, somebody came here one night and said, all eight feet of my basement was flooded. You know, they had a pool in their basement. You know, so, um, you know, that was, that was a real extreme event. And, you know, so... When I talk to engineering, I think their understanding is, is yes, we, they acknowledge those storms, but them knowing the operational capacity of the town and if you design a, a new water surge into that system that is larger capacity than what the system can handle, it's like, it's like going, you know, from five lanes to two lanes in their stormwater treatment town-wide. You know what I mean? So they, I'm kind of listening to them say, we could design for, and they say this across the board. I'm not saying in particular, you know, I'm just talking about town-wide. They say, um, if, if we do start designing for those huge storms, he said, first of all, not sure the town capacity pipes can handle it. Not sure. You know what I mean? It's a question. Um, and the second thing is um, a lot of designs that they have approved to those higher storms. The town engineer has said to me, it's over-designed. We never see these. And, and that's still a question to me, observationally, as we go forward and as I go back to some of these sites and I visit it during the storms is, you know, is what the town engineer is saying to me of like, you know, a detention basin like this may not fill on an annual basis. 
that is so it sounds like that town engineer is telling me if we does right now his perception is designing to those higher standards um is overkill in reading and i i i continue to try to vet that it's still really high on my list because of because we suffer because you guys all suffer so much from water issues you know, and so I'm, but I'm trying to do some sort of observation and ask, and to, I, I think it's a place we need to get to, um, and, but when Horseline went and reviewed this, and when the town engineer reviewed this, they checked those de design storms, and even if it's a design storm that I personally would not prefer to see, they vetted that. And they've all said, this meets the standards and it doesn't look like, as best as they can tell by the design and the model, this doesn't look like there's going to be an intense impact. And also looking at this plan, I mean, just considering the per lot infiltration that's happening, they're taking all that roof and they're infiltrating it on each lot. There is, that shows me that there is a strong amount of, there, that the developer is trying to slow down that water surge by at least covering the roof, which is, for some of these lots, is half of the impervious. I'm ballparking just by my eyeballs, but half to more than half of the impervious on each lot. So they're trying to sort of take the problem of stormwater and take half of it per lot and put it right in the ground so that it doesn't surge to the wetland. And then they're taking whatever comes from the street and they're putting it into this basin. And then there's the control structures on the basin to see, you know, to see if that works. I think as what well. we've heard so. from, from our third party reviewer from engineering is that they've met the standards that are set. So. I'm not saying it can't, that our well, process can't. The standards that are set, but the standards aren't accurate for what's the newer model that's expected, right? So it's that's not correct. That's, that's, that's not correct, yeah. The standard is, the standard is what? They have to meet the standard that engineering says that our dra the drainage systems in town, you design to a certain standard, they are meeting that ra those rainfall events. The standard is, I think the standard is you cannot increase the, I mean, step in people who are more knowledgeable about this, but that you cannot increase the net surge of water. Right, you can't increase the rate or the velocity, uh, the amount or the velocity, but that's not what the gentleman is saying. I think what the gentleman is saying is that he's under, the, I think, respectively, the mistaken impression that there are two um, standards of data that are suggesting uh, that one is, you say, more conservative, and there's a difference of view about whether it's indeed more accurate, informing everyone that this system has been designed to meet what you require as a town. And it is under discussion with your town whether you should require something different, and that reasonable minds disagree about those two sets of models. It's not that one is definitely more accurate than another. And the gentleman to the left, um, David, I can't read your last name, so I apologize. Yes was saying that if it is a 100-year storm, other, under either one of those models, everybody is underwater. So let me just follow up. So there was a, um, a development that was a few streets down from us. Janice, what was the that's Randall Road. Randall Road. So that was, um, I would assume, gone, gone through the entire process. I would assume, um, and from what I'm told, those houses had water after construction. So I, we went through this whole process. We did the vetting, the engineer gave the stamp, and they have flooding in the basement. So, you know, I'm not sure what they did to, uh, who they talked to with that. Was that the town that that stepped in? Was that the construction piece that, script, that stepped in? Uh, and this is just all coming from what happens when we're a year in, the entire thing is flattened or raised or, you know, the three feet that's in my backyard, and I have a pond now. Who do I talk to? 
So I, I, I got to say that I haven't heard anything from any of the new owners um, or the old owners that there's any flooding in their basement over at Randall Road. Um, hasn't come to me once. So I'm surprised to hear that. Um, and I, the only, I can only remember one on uh, Pineville, Pineville Road where the contractor had to continually pump around the foundation and the town allowed him to tie into the storm drain. And that's the only one I ever saw that I thought was going to flood out. But, um, you know, uh, it's, so what's happening here is like we're in, you're like right on this area where we've been using this old model and the stormwater, uh, uh, the stormwater rigs and the MS4 permit and the state and the feds, they're all going to change over to a new model soon. And some of the towns are being doing that uh, proactively, but, but we haven't done that here yet. So we, we can't, we can't do it. It's, it's, uh, we've, we, us and the engineering department have asked them to design this to the standard that is in place right now. And it, and it may make a lot of sense in the future to design to like the NOAA 14, I think it is. Um, but, but right now we're only designing to this level. So, I mean, there's, there's really nothing else we can say about um, that design at this point. Great. All right. Thank you. Do I have any, do you hear anything else? Any other comments? Chuck, do you have anything? Uh, I don't, I don't have any comments. I, uh, I went through the Horsley Witten uh, reports again. And I made these notes. I thought they were they were pretty good. I wanted to make sure that all the uh, um, abutters had a chance to speak up, and uh, we can anticipate what they might be worried about during construction and then after that. Um, so I just want to make sure that everyone who feels like talking about that, you know, says something tonight. One thing, Judy Coleman, 18 Milton Road. I understand that there are 24 trees that need to be taken down and planted. I just urge the you know, applicants to see if they really need to take down that many. You know, a tree that's 40 or 50 years old from the replacement of a high road. Thank you. I just want to first say thank you to the Regents um, Commission. I know personally I've asked a lot of questions throughout the process. I've been to every single one of these meetings. Um, <coughs> And I think we just have to put our trust in you right now because, you know, this isn't our area of expertise, at least it's not mine. So I just, you know, I appreciate the due diligence um, because it does feel like from our perspective moving forward, we have a lot of responsibility on our end. So I just want to say thank you for the due diligence that you put in and embedding these plans and making sure um, to the best of your ability that the storm water is, is taken care of. One of the things that I want to say to all of you about is that if something doesn't seem to be going right, don't wait a month to make a call, phone call to the gentleman that's sitting across from me. If, something, if you have concern about something, call Chuck. Let him know. That's right. Even even if we have an environmental monitor on this site, they, they won't be out there as much as uh, someone who lives right next door. Uh, Andy, I wanted to ask you, what is the caliber of the trees that you're, you're uh, installing? And there's 25 trees that the Conservation Commission is getting, and I think there's 24 trees that are going on the tree row. I think there's a plan that has all one. C7. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. I keep on getting Becky's full size. <laughs> we talked about 25 <laughs> mind. Mm -hmm. Conservation placement trees, and then around the roadway that's that's tree water. But are they uh, like three inch caliper or are they yeah I mean it's it's the, has the, that been decided yet or is that something we decided we're... I mean it was really we were gonna meet the standard of the commission in your office. Sure. Like sure. That. I think that I remember that coming yeah. up. So what's in our tree policy is what you'll meet. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's, that's right. two and a half that's to three inch caliper trees. They're ten to fifteen feet. That's tall. what we discussed last time. And I'm just looking at the map and the trees that are be taken down are like inside the house boundaries inside the driveway on a slope that's clearly going to be changing so it looks to me like they 
really aren't taking down trees that they don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. So those X's on the screen right now. Yeah. The goal is always to save whatever can be saved. Anything that doesn't need to come down is not needless tree removal. Mm -hmm. There's been a reference to engine signing off is that something that we typically get here I don't see it in the paperwork so they did sign off um, they reviewed the last bit of everything came in on Thursday and uh, Alex Rizicki, which is a town engineer signed off on the project I have the memo I did think I sent it out but I can I can send it out later but but they're all set it wasn't in our package but yeah no. yeah may have, may have email so There's a lot of moving parts with several projects. Conditions. Okay. It'll be, you know, I, I think you guys received it. We did, yes. Yeah. Yep. So, and these 24. Sorry, Just trying to understand. So right. the so the replacement trees are going to be uh, between the lots and the 25 foot. Well, well, right now, well, f for one, replacement trees. Uh, our intention is to court or not whoever builds this is to coordinate with the conservation commission. We're, we're showing them as being replaced. The intent is inside the buffer zone, outside of the 25 foot. But that I think is, you know, that's the plan is more to acknowledge that we're providing that number of trees and suggest some locations that seem appropriate. But if there's, there, yeah, the it's, we're not going to stake them out with a surveyor. You know, if we, if there's places that make sense or certain species that make sense, then that's that's how it. Ms. Scanlon, if you look at uh, what Chuck wrote as additional comments, he noted the finding, final uh, condition would be the final planning location how they coordinated with the tree yeah. board and the conservation. Yeah. Right. We won't we won't have the tree warden as on our condition. See, it's two separate areas. Um, yeah. One part of that that makes it hard when we get to the or when we get to the certificate of compliance. Is it's not on a plan where we can go out on a site visit and just go, oh yeah, this tree here, there it is. Okay, this tree here. You know what I mean? Well, we can count 25 new trees, yep. and um, I think what would happen would we'd have I would ask Maureen uh, uh, and myself go out there and figure out where these are going to go. Um, 25. Can you get 25 in? I'm not sure, but I think we have a better well. better chance of finding good spots when we. We have a number, a rough idea, but right. let's, let's go out and make a decision right. based on seeing everything else. Right. All right. Is there anything else? Do I hear a motion? Uh, can I make a, make a motion to close NOI 270-0714, 135, 139, and 149R uh, Howard Street? Second. Oh, second. All those in favor? So, I'm just as you want to. So, I, I just don't feel I've been on the commission long enough to vote. Okay. Um, yeah, to, for a further discussion of board discussion notation about who voted Yeah. Um, so, Chuck, do we need four votes for. Uh, yeah. So. And you got your four vote? We did not. Oh, oh John. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm getting confused <laughs> with the associates. Yeah, you move. Okay. Yeah, that's what was in favor. Yeah. So, do you do the opposed and abstain? Opposed. See none. Abstained. All right. See four, 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 zero to one. All right. Thank you. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> We should explain. We have two non-voting. Yeah, and we have two non-voting members, two associate members. Sorry, John. Before all the associates were on one side. Still <laughs> to keep it I'm still trying to get it used to it. <laughs> we should introduce ourselves as associates. Anyway, I, yeah. I, I, we can talk about it. <laughs> so the minimum. So the, so the next, the next step is we'll so write the order of conditions yeah. and uh, distribute it to the applicant yeah. and the commission. So and receive comments and finalize it at the next meeting where we'll issue 
will have a vote to issue the order of conditions. Yeah, so what we would expect to see. Could I ask if Moore could hear what Chuck just said? Sorry. It's terribly important. All right, sorry. Go ahead, Chuck. Uh, um, so uh, in between, so right now we just closed the meeting. That means we can talk amongst ourselves, but we're not going to take any more information or any discussion or comments from the uh, applicants or abutters. And we'll I'll write an order of conditions. I'll distribute it to the commission and the applicants. Um, we'll all make comments. We'll keep those comments separate, and we'll come back to the commission and uh, discuss them at at, uh, at the meeting and finalize the order of conditions. So comments go straight back to you. There's no discussion among us with our comments. They go straight back to you. I just so want to make the sure process is clear. when I send out the order of the condition, I'll blind CC everybody. So when you read, is that how you do it? No, you do it. Uh, I think it's blind CC. And then no one can return. So you can reply. reply and it just goes back to you. So it's just you. So the, the important that you don't combine everybody with your comments and create some sort of discussion point. So just email your comments back to me. Um, and I'll set them up in the order so they can see who, who wrote them and we'll discuss them at the meeting and say yay and nay to them. Um, and same thing. You just, I usually what ends up happening is you bring your comments uh, to the meeting that night, but you can also email them to me. Um, respectfully, it'd be my pleasure to provide them in advance so that your agent and anybody who he wants to contribute to has time to see it. And I respectfully ask if you put it in a word form, it can be track changed so you can see more easily. It's far easier to follow if there is anything to be said. When a person has to comment with bullet points and refer back with an asterisk, it's really hard to follow. I think in general we've just sent a PDF of the, the document. Um, Could you tolerate a word copy? Uh, you know what? I think I, I'm fine with keeping it the way you know, I, I can follow what you, what you add. Um, I think the preference here is that we send the PDF. Thank you. And I would like to make an observation in public that an abstention vote is like a no vote. It takes a certain number of people to get a valid vote. <coughs> in this case, it didn't affect the outcome, but it really does if you abstain. Okay. And Maya, you've worked incredibly hard, all of you, and you've been in incredibly good detail, vastly more analysis than I see on many conservation I'm just learning. You're doing a great job. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you to the public for coming out and coming to all the meetings. Site? Main Street? Something has not been delivered. Nothing what? Uh, what's not provided with the... Oh, I don't know. Okay. Okay. We'll move on to our second item on our agenda. This is 364 Lowell Street. This is a... Continued public hearing for an amendment over order conditions uh, filed by Jameson Properties. Uh, this is for DP file number 270-0675. Uh, I'll just now quickly introduce the commission from our right. You did connect. Martha Moore. Tamika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Michael Flynn, Chair. Nicola Mazur, Associate. Tay Evans, Associate, non-voting member. John Sullivan. Chef Tarani, Conservation Administrator. Uh, no, no. Good evening. Bill Manuel from Wetlands and Land Management. Uh, Steve Dodge is here right behind me. He's the builder, the uh, prime builder on the project. David Jameson is the applicant for the, uh, the project as well. They were here through most of the initial hearings several years ago. Uh, I was last here in October, and uh, we had a proposal which uh, we the information we took away from the commission was not very popular. Um, so uh, we have had the opportunity to rethink that proposal and also uh, work the discussions with Chuck. 
uh, several times, and we appreciate the opportunity to have that dialogue with Chuck, as he actually was able to come out to the site, give us some good uh, input and some insight to what he thought uh, could lead to something that the commission may approve. So what we are here tonight to talk about is a, a dramatically a smaller uh, egress to the, the lower level. Uh, this is the first house. This was the existing house on the subdivision. And the commission did approve this garage addition here in the front porch. And this, well, this is the street, so I guess this is the front yard and this side porch here. And uh, what we'd like to do now is <coughs> the idea of having an egress to the, the cellar level is very important for Steve as a builder because he, he strives to have a good product. Uh, it just makes sense to have an exterior entrance to the building in case you need to service the water heater if the water heater goes, and it will in the lifetime of the, the structure. Uh, whatever. You don't want to have to drag it out up the stairs through the house and out through the house. You, it would be tremendously convenient if a contractor could just bring it out and sell her door right there. What we're proposing is a door right there. Uh, we're proposing a poured concrete wall, retaining wall, and this dimension right here is only three and a half feet, barely enough for the door to swing out. Uh, we, this is a poured concrete wall because that was suggested by Chuck as something very stable that a homeowner could not, as opposed to say a block wall, a homeowner could not decide on a weekend that, hey, I don't like that wall and I want to make everything bigger and take a sledgehammer or whatever and disassemble a wall. You'd have a real project with a poured concrete wall. So uh, we're suggesting that here. It's about four or five steps up to grade. Uh, you asked us the last time we were here, you asked us to, to go away and come back with information on were there any alternatives for egress. Uh, I think that was the first time that Chuck came out to the site to actually look at, at this project with that eye. And he can, I won't speak for him, but I'll tell a report to the commission. Uh, remember, this, this cellar here, it, it was really was the garage under. It wasn't a cellar in the, in the initial house. It was the garage under. So it's not, it's not very big at all. This is the, the garage, which you approved. It's constructed. It's a slab on grade. So obviously, we can't egress out anywhere here. Uh, this is the front porch, which you approved. Obviously, we can't egress out anywhere here. Uh, this is the porch, which you approved. We obviously cannot get out in this direction at all. Anywhere along this wall, it's just going to end up being closer to the wetland, which is what we're all striving to uh, not do. So this was, this opening right here, this was the, the former garage door to the garage under. And that's why there's no obstruction here, because it was the garage door. So this seems to be the most logical location to be able to put an, an egress door. What we're proposing is to restrict, once you come out of this door, we want to put a line of shrubs that will connect right to the uh, BMP number one, the, the main detention basin on the site. So this will deter anybody from saying, hey, I'd like to come out and maybe <coughs> use this area. Uh, another thing that's happened since we've met with you is that there's now a buyer for the property. And the buyer is fully aware, he's appraised of, of the commission's uh, intentions to not have this area used in any appreciable way. And he's on board with that, they're on board with that. And to that end, what we also, we've amended the, uh, the plan to show a fence. Can you pan that over, Chuck? Yep. Uh, that's as far as it's going. So I don't know if I have, you have another copy? Uh, I think if you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So we want to put a, a fence coming right to the <laughs> corner of the, the house and lining going around the corner and basically closing this in. This is the front of the house. This will be the front entrance. This becomes the usable side yard. I think 
they have a, a dog, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's fenced in so that their dog can have a place to run and, and a child. So this becomes the play yard. This little flat area here becomes the little patio area that you, know, you could put a grill or something like that. Uh, so you are now physically blocked. If you come out this side yard door here, you're physically blocked from coming around the house from this direction. Uh, this line of shrubbery is intended to deter anybody. Obviously, if you want to barge through a line of shrubs, you can, but it's intended to deter anybody from coming around through this side. And it pretty much leaves this area untouched. Uh, we think that's a reasonable proposal. Uh, we would like an egress there for the just the reason of it's a better product. Steve feels it's a better product um, when he leaves the job. One thing I want to point out to you is that if you approve this scenario, we are actually tightening up the site from what you initially approved with the, with the original subdivision plan. And I just want to illustrate that. Take a look at this feature right here. This is the was the lid to the existing uh, cesspool. <coughs> so this plan here is a blow up of what was approved. This is the approved plan. I didn't blow up on any scale just so that you could see it. This is what we're proposing right now. I've highlighted the pink dot is the cesspool here. So in the original approval, you actually allowed grading that extended out over that, that cesspool area. And I've kind of taken this and brought it down to here to show you what that grading would look like if we built it to the approved plan. So your grading would actually extend out around the back of the house and create a, a grass slope. What we're proposing is to cut that off right here. The, the 92 contour, which was approved to go out and around like that, is going to go right into that retaining wall. And this line of shrubbery uh, is the basically the limit of walking. So this actually tightens up the project more than what you approved. So as I said, we have a buyer. They have a buyer. I don't have a buyer. Uh, the buyer is fully appraised of the situation. He's on board with it and feel like uh, they've decided, okay, we'll fence in the street side and that will be the usable yard. We don't need to get around the back of the house, but they would like to have that egress in and out. Um, that's, what it, that's what it looks like. I'd like to put a retaining wall right there. Boom, couple of steps. There was a question about, uh, you're going to collect water in here. The, uh, this will be a pervious landing, and the, they'll dig it out and put a bunch of stone under there. The soils out here are 100% coarse sand. Um, they're the best soils I've ever seen. Frankly, I've never seen water in the detention basin since it's been built because everything just percolates into the ground. So we have no doubt that the water is going to go through the pervious uh, paver landing here and go right into the ground. Uh, and then a couple steps in this area here. You know, I, I suppose they'll, you know, keep uh, the bushes away from the house, but it's all cut off. So I think it's a reasonable proposal. We've shown you that this is the best egress to if we we're going to have a, a a basement egress, and it actually tightens up the site from what you approved. Uh, so before we uh, we get to comments, we had a site visit on <coughs> Tuesday. Okay. Yesterday morning. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, myself, Martha, Anika, and Chuck were at the site. Um, Chuck, I think, was just showing some pictures from our site visit. Uh, there was the, the there's actually door and two side lights already installed. Um, that area, I think at, we had made a site visit now a couple months ago, um, and that had already been, that area back there had already been excavated down to that, that depth. Um, uh, so the current 
condition is there is already a doorway and side lights installed. Um, any other comments from the site visit? Not from the site visit. I just want to clarify a couple of things there. Remember, this was the, the level of the garage under. So before this foundation was in, it was all this, this elevation. There used to be a retaining <coughs> wall, right? On, it was a block retaining wall right along that. Yeah, so the reason why that's excavated for two reasons, there was a retaining wall and there was a tree in the retaining wall. So when we took the tree out, the retaining wall collapsed. So that excavation has been like that since we put the garage on, the garage addition in. If you see this flat surface right here, the one's on the back side of the garage from the door this way, that is a footing that we had to dig down to get to our frost height, which is four feet lower. So that area has been excavated and cleaned and maintained being cleaned throughout the whole project. So we didn't dig that out. Um, the design of the house always had, that was the opening of the garage with the windows and the doors. We just happened to have the doors, the windows uh, left over from another project. That's how I came up with that design. So I just kept going with that design. And then when we, when I realized that that wasn't allowed is when we came to that last meeting for that, I always thought we were going to patio. It was just a miscommunication between what was agreed upon for the last meeting for the uh, addition of the garage. So it wasn't, it wasn't moving forward head against anybody's. I think when we made our first site visit, I don't, I don't, I think that was just an opening. I don't think there was any, anything actually there. I don't there. remember when, that's been like that for about two and a half months. Um, that, but it was a garage. It wasn't, it was a garage. Yeah. That was, that was there. The siding might not have been on and it might not have been yeah. finished on the inside. Um, but when I found out what it was about a month ago, when I found out, I'm, I'm under the, <coughs> if it has to be changed, I can make it easy. Meet you. So, uh, so it, it, you know, it seems like a reasonable request. I mean, everyone wants to get into their basements, but um, where why we're perplexed by this situation is because it was, and Mike found uh, the video where it was discussed that the back of the house was supposed <coughs> to get no more improvements and. Um, so, so that deal, that mitigation for allowing this garage, which took the first order of conditions, was actually withdrawn, um, and then they came through with the second order of conditions. But it was there was a lot of talk and discussion about moving that garage and and pushing it as close to the house because it's in our 35 foot and it's in our it's a new structure in our 35 foot and in our 25 foot. So the commission at that time was struggling to approve it and as part of the mitigation that we got it was there would be no work allowed in the back um and i don't know i didn't no, know i think that, I, I that took your word perfect. for it i, I didn't actually think watch our, the video our concerns back then and and our justification for allowing the variance so th there's garage within the 35 foot our justification for allowing the variance and, and bill was you're sitting here uh, giving this defense was that we are separating the the you know what was currently existing is the driveway came down and, and went into basically this where this door is located. The the benefit of allowing a variance where the garage was was well everything's going to be separated now in the front. Nobody had to have to go back there for any reason. We were going to be able to maintain that twenty five foot buffer zone with undisturbed really no no traffic no access it would just it was going to be free to 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 grow as it pleases and now we're we're cutting another 10 feet off of it right oh we're not so, so wait a minute bill i'm gonna so um and i know but i wanted to i just wanted to add something you know i i I think that you know it was a it was a subdivision. There was a lot of discussion. I can't imagine that, and I, I actually agree. That the builder wanted a basement uh, doorway, and I do believe that he forgot about it. So for me, what we're talking about is, you know, if it, if it has to go in, 
you know, I ask them not to put a walkway around the front. I ask them to keep it as tight as possible. I ask them to, um, uh, you know, make it as uh, utilitarian as they possibly could. And, and they've gotten pretty close to that. I think that I could have done a little bit more and stripped out a couple of side lights and just been a straight shot and whatnot. But, but what I didn't ask for, which is actually evolved in this situation, is what Bill was talking about, is we've, we've eliminated any, um, any walking on, the back, on that back area below the, um, below the trees and beyond the fence. And I think that that's something we have. I don't know if, if we have the ability to try to lock that in somehow. The, the order of conditions is closed, but um, it, it, it seems like, you know, I wouldn't want a furnace going. I mean, I think Steve said this to me, and I wasn't thinking about it. I was only thinking about what, what the promise that was made. But I couldn't have a, I couldn't have a furnace come through my front you know, down the, you know, through the, the kitchen, through, down the first floor, stairs, and then down the stairs, the, the damage, whatnot, and everything. So it, it makes sense that something's needed. I mean, that, that's all I'm going to add to this. Uh, in line with the, what we were just talking about, what is, what's, what are you proposing to plant? Thank you. Bearberry. Well, what is, do you, can you describe what that is exactly? Uh, it's like an evergreen, uh, low shrub. Uh, that was the engineer's choice. If you wanted something with more height, we can certainly do that. That's it. I think those only grow a little, like a foot high. A yeah, foot they're high. low. Yeah. They're low. Um, so I think we'd be looking for something to create a little bit more separation. Sure. Can we get? Uh, can we come back to you with our suggestion because we can have? Sure. Unless someone wants I'm, to make a suggestion. I'm not the right person to make a suggestion. Yeah, I don't know if so, anyone else. I mean, I'm I'm gonna suggest something that grows to be, you know, at least a five foot shrub. <laughs> a native, a native. Something native. Uh, something. Upland, something native. Obviously. Yep. And uh, yeah. yeah. I would I would agree with that. Um. Okay, I have a question, and this is, you know, my only second meeting. I don't know how these things work. At the previous meeting, we had this whole conversation about how much of the fee the person was going to be paying because they were proposing work inside the 35 or 25 foot limit. If they've got more work inside the 25 foot limit does that change the fee they should have paid for this job for the piece of porch that's now inside that area or when the conditions is closed is the fee done you know generally you pay your fee up front for what you're proposing and the fees are were calculated more by lot there was a fee for the road and then a fee for each lot uh, yeah. But there's this whole list here. There's the whole list of uh, $1.25 per square foot of buffer zone altered within the 25 feet resource area. <laughs> that's what I'm questioning. You know, if you it's propose an something and then you build yeah, something like that's different from what you order. proposed. I think go either way. Is, is that this is not altering anything that wasn't already there. This was a driveway and an entrance to a garage as part Except of the original home. Except the porch part. No. I don't think it's... Uh, no, this part that they're actually asking for, this... this. Um, um, it's only talking about the back. The concrete piece. wall and this red piece, that was the driveway to get in the garage. This... Three foot um, by This, this six red foot. part right there, that's it used to come the, from the street one point and actually turn into the garage, so that was... But the driveway was kind of... It's not a lot of money, yeah, but if, but let's say if it, if it was, if it, I don't know, that's an amended well, order. Actually, it was not a minor plan was, change. Uh, I can see in a minor plan change, you would, you would like, yeah, so it's it's down, down down slow. It's not. Yeah, there not was a cap in the driveway. I don't think that's a lot of money. It was three no, feet by seven was, or eight they're, feet. They're, they're proposing impervious uh, surface. Guys, we're just having a bunch of different conversations. I want to get everybody to focus. Sorry. I didn't mean to create a hazard. No, 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 it's good. It's good. It's a question. I just know? want everybody. You're I want everybody talking about something the same different thing. than what you got approval for. I think we're amending the order of conditions. That's what it's here for, and the fees are a valid point to bring up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would agree. Yeah. 
I, so I also agree. Do you want to calculate what the fee is and assess that to us? Sure. You want me to do it now? <laughs> More if you want to do it. <laughs> More trees? <laughs> um, no, I, I think you have to pay the fee. Uh, I, I don't expect there would be too much, too big a fee. I mean, what's getting qualified under here? I think you, you said it correctly. It's twenty five per square foot of buffer zone. And and it's the addition of the stairway, the wall, the, the concrete patio in that area. Yeah, what are, like, what are we, what are we, what are we, what are we talking about here? So let's, let's calculate it out and, and be done with it. Like, <laughs> no, it's more than three and a half minutes. Seventy-two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> right. Outrageous. But I, I think that's it's a great good point by Martha. I think that's within our regulation. It's not a lot. I mean, I, sorry. It's, yeah. it's one of those things that's like we spent way too much time to even talking about. It. So, all right. Um, anything else? Um, I just want to. I just want to say that you know that I'd like to see. I, I sort of assume that those plantings, the, the shrubs, um, what I'd like to see for those shrubs, and I'll just speak for myself, if anybody wants to chime in, please do, so on conservation, but I'd like to see those shrubs be sort of like a natural fence line between, between <coughs> um, that whole back corner of that building, of the building, which, which tells me there needs to be plants between the patio and the wetland. You know, that shrub line can't go to the corner of that. It can't go to the corner of that concrete wall. It has to go all the way to the corner of the building. Like, it has to be a complete natural barrier. Um, the patio I don't is, want... is several, well, it's about four steps down. So right. there's a retaining wall. But yeah, we have another couple of shrubs. Um, and a good thick barrier, which you know, three to five foot tall shrubs is going to be three to five foot tall natives, uh, not a monoculture. Please, <laughs> just something that can survive there. Yeah. Make it. Yeah. As long as, as long as we're getting the intent here, which is, as Anika said. <laughs> now, would there be a similar similar operations and maintenance program for the owner about not removing those shrubs, not having a, a gate in the proposed privacy fence that would be an egress to the backyard? Is, is that a similar so you wanna... something that would be applied to this? There's a couple property. ways, I think, to do that. One is in the O&M, another one is in the order of conditions that right. gets attached to their deed. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sometimes right. it's both and, sometimes it's one or the other. I, I think this is one where it's part of the order, and order. that's a condition. And because this isn't really an O&M activity, that I say, but this is... You can amend the O&M. I mean, the whole order is open. That's the... Okay. Yep. That's what happens yep. when you... Do we? Does this have O&M for each lot, though? There's a, there's an operation maintenance plan, and, and you could, you know, actually, I don't know if there's one for the lot. I, would I, I don't know that there's there one, one for each lot on this one. There's only one for the detention pond. Right. Yeah. Another thing from my one previous meeting, that whole conversation about people dumping the yard waste down the hillside, and I'm picturing the uh, part of the fence between the house and Lowell Street, People might very, be very tempted to rake the leaves and pour them down the hillside right there next to the house. Is that something that we can say no dumping of yard waste down into the 35 foot, 30, 25 foot buffer zone? We do typically so, add that yeah, so in as one. Just do a continuing three. condition for that. I mean, I, I think that when we're getting into, like, if you started thinking, like, oh, let's, let's, block this from everything I mean again it's just a, it's just a entrance to the back of the house I mean and people can walk in the back of their house and anyone who puts a shed back there is going to have to come to the Commission and to the building department so we can rule on that in the future and decide about that so I don't think we need to restrict it 
like completely now. Um, and with the fence and the row of shrubs, it, it, it's pretty good. I mean, you, you have the opportunity to change the order. And if you want, and I, I can put something in about, you know, you have to, yard waste has to be removed from the property or something like that instead of, um, we, we could add that as an uh, ongoing condition uh, and anything else you come up with, but I'm not comfortable with uh, like restricting the backyard for future development because it's in the 35 foot, it's no structure zone. So there sh shouldn't be anything back there in the first place. And then, um, and then maybe they would want to uh, make that into a nice <coughs> garden. So, and they could do that on their own. So a garden is allowed between the 25 and the 35 line. So how we've usually uh, work the 25 foot line is it's a zone of natural vegetation. That doesn't mean it has to be some brambly. It can be um, developed through a landscape architect to have a native uh, native planted area. Uh, it has to be approved by the commission. Uh, so that's how we've done that in the past. And I, I wasn't implying that people have to remove their yard waste from their yard completely. I'm just thinking about that last thing, the, the meeting last two time, two weeks ago, and yeah. thinking about, you know, if they wanted to have their compost area, it should be up in the corner before you get into the wetland area. Well, you were right on with that, because when they bought this house and this property, they had to remove all the yard waste from that drop off into the wetland. It was a big activity that yeah. was actually part of the condition of the, of the whole <laughs> so, project was removing <clears throat> years and years of debris that was put into the wetland. Okay. Multiple 30 yard containers of debris. So it's, it's occurred to people to, to do what you, you were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Are there any anything else from the commission? Any other conditions? Any other? I, I had I just had a question. Sorry, Dave, did you say something? No. Um, um, did again so lost? Did this subdivision originally have a planting plan for what? For post development. Uh, we had a an extensive mitigation plan from Lowell Street all the way back to the culvert. Uh, remember we had the knotweed removal. Right. Uh, we and had the, a you've already tree done the replacement planting. area uh, over by this cul-de-sac. We've got a tree yeah. replacement plan around the, the upper perimeter of the property. Right. So we've got trees everywhere. We've yep. got uh, planting plants okay. for the LIDs for each lot. Okay. Yeah, so this, this came through when we had our tree policy in place, so they met that. They, ha they had to have met the one-to-one -one replacement. I just want to make sure that whatever this, this sort of amended planting isn't at odds with what we've previously talked about. No, they're not removing the subdivision. It's in addition to. Yeah. Okay. This is... um, and so we're calling this an amended order. We're not saying they need an additional variance. It's a, an amended order of conditions. Um, that was a question I had is this sort of after the fact encroachment into that 25 foot, doesn't it always call for a variance yep. a right up? Yep. We need a variance right up. which I've seen people do in the meeting. <laughs> like. right. So would this just be attached to the variance that we've already approved? Well, you need, it's, it would just be a separate, separate. variance. Added. So really, I mean, it's work I think within the area that you've already approved. And you already gave a variance to grade out to here and it's already a variance for the structure, really, but all this is is a, a, an egress with some steps in an area that you've already approved to work in. It's the difference between grading and construction of poured concrete. And I, in my opinion, 
I think it requires that additional encroachment requires at a minimum. I mean, you have that sense of the variance proposing it's writing up the variance and giving written justification for this amended change and what uh, the alternatives have been, right? So the alternatives to avoiding that 25 foot encroachment and how it's unavoidable. I mean, I begrudgingly can be in approval of this, especially considering maybe, you know, fire, fire escape options for the homeowner. Um, um, but um, as a rule, I get really uncomfortable with um, changing something and just saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll just let you do this after we fought really hard to say, no, nothing's going to happen here. So Anika, You know what I mean? So I want to see that variance I guess what right I would, up. Yeah, what and, I would just say is I think it's appropriate to amend, if we're amending the order of conditions, that part of that amend amendment is an attachment of the ver variance justification that we would do on any other project. And, and Bill, I think you, in essence, have <laughs> explained that today. But I think it's good to get that in the record in the order so that when it's put in the order of conditions, yeah, so it's written up. It's, it's all the record is there. Yeah. Yeah. Not a problem. Are there any other items or comments? Chuck, do you have anything else? No. Comments from the public? Do I have a motion? Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to. Uh, Approve the amended order conditions for 270-675, Lot 1 of Lyle Estates, 364, Level 3. So hold on. We want to close, and then we're going to get the amendment, so don't don't issue. So make a motion to close. Close the hearing? Yeah, it's a hearing for the amended order of conditions. Okay. Make a motion to close the hearing. EP 270-675, Lot 1, Lyle Estates, 364, Lowell Street. Second. All those in favor? All right, thank you. So we have to, we have to make the same motion to approve the amended order? I, I wouldn't, don't, I no, wouldn't worry about uh, it. No, I'm going to write um, the amended order okay. just to add this part to it, and you're going to get me a variance before the next meeting, and then we'll look. And that'll be it. We'll, uh, we'll uh, issue the order. And then uh, we find you have to record that. <laughs> the amended order will include the $72 or whatever. Yeah, so. <laughs> so I'm not signing it unless it does. Yeah. Yeah. So, so prior to us actually saying, signing that, just make sure you're not giving it to him. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's our seventy-two fifty. dollars Power of writing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Guys. Thanks for coming in. All right. Moving right along, we'll go to the next continued public hearing and notice intent filed by Jay Finnegan, 259 and 267 Main Street, uh, Map 12, Lots 39 and 40, DEP file number 270727. I'll use the commission starting on my right. David Finette. Martha Moore. Nika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Michael Flynn, Chair. Glazer, Associate. G. Evans, Associate. John Sullivan. Chuck Tarani, Conservation Administrator. Okay, so uh, this project, last, last hearing we asked Chuck to go out and look for uh, Quotes for um, third party review. Uh, Chuck's done that. He reached out to Horsley Witten and LEC and has gotten two quotes. Uh, one quote was forwarded to the commission and the applicant earlier this week, and I think we just got one today. So I don't know if anybody's had a chance to even look at it yet, if the applicants had a chance to look at it yet. Um, that's the Horsley Witten yeah, one just came in today. I just saw it now. I don't think anyone had a chance to look at it. Chuck, did you? The LEC was sent out last 
last week to the commission and I didn't hear back from anyone. I, I looked you? at LECs. I looked at LECs and actually wondered if they could um, remove a couple of tasks. Remove tasks? Remove tasks okay. because LECs had a notice of intent review, site visit. I think both those absolutely have to happen. An initial email or memo, which is fine. And then a working session and a second email memo, which I think were unnecessary. And then they recommended a summary report and then a meeting and then <coughs> additional work to contribute to the order of conditions with special findings and special conditions. So I thought the working session and the second email memo was unnecessary for this particular project. And I think, and I think Horsley would so I, I didn't have a chance to review Leslie Witten, uh, but I did talk to Janet Renato about this mm -hmm. and then Amy Ball uh, this afternoon. Uh, but just to uh, give you some pushback on your comment, these um, this uh, scope of work was developed through a conversation I had with Ann Martin and Janet Bernardo. So I'm not comfortable removing anything from it because uh, it was my uh, just kind of open conversation <laughs> and what we want and what we expect and um, there's probably always a little bit if they don't if they don't use that time or need that uh, meeting they can give back uh, you know but but this is a big project and it's it's been flagged by DEP and those things I was I was thinking an additional site visit would be uh, would be needed <laughs> and uh, yeah just to, just to make sure you know, so um, but I was I'm happy to see that the first site visit was in there well can you describe a little bit what you think is going to happen in I had a couple questions about the working session is that going to be a public meeting no that's okay. a working session uh, that uh, was with the applicant and. Uh, myself and the chair, vice chair, just to move, um, uh, just try to try to get to a point where we understand, uh, you know, clearly what's what's going on. It was offered by Ann Martin. I guess she's done it in the past, and she says it's very helpful uh, to move the process forward. Uh, so we're, you know, again, just to make sure everyone understands, we're not bad. We this commission is not at odds with the applicant. It's just we've been, uh, we've been uh, told that this permit as it exists is not something that DEP would even consider. And I want to know why. I'm sure you guys want to know why. And the applicant wants to know what he needs to change, how he can beef up his alternative analysis and mitigation and what other things that they can do have someone look at that and talk to them directly would probably be more helpful in that type of meeting. I would agree. I think there's value to that. I think that's getting two professionals, you know, I, I think the commission wants to be involved in what that discussion is, at least from the, you know, a uh, couple members being there, and I think that allows two professionals to get together and say, you know, what do you need to do to make this buildable and, and meet the requirements? Because I, I think Chuck, you said it best, that this is something that we did not see issues with and DEP did. Um, so uh, I think there's value to getting everybody in the room beforehand and just parsing out what, what they see. So what are we supposed to do with these pr two proposals? Are we supposed to vote on which company gets hired to do this? Yes. All right. So. The Horsley Witten one gives us a breakdown of what it's actually going to cost, and they're proposing a fee at the end. I, I don't see a comparable dollars and cents on the other one. Last, yeah. last paragraph, yeah, free fee that. for services. Ah, it's hiding. Oh, it is. is. Here we go. You got it? All right. It's not Thank terribly you. different. No. Yeah. It's in the same Well, it's the same. It's the same scope. 
All right. I just was looking at the big chart on the back page, which didn't have a bottom it's line. The hour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. I guess I would open up to applicant. Have, have you had a chance to? I, I know you probably just received the hoard agreement one day. Do, do, have you seen any issues with the? Do you guys take any have any objections to the scope or the approach or anything that's? Thank you, uh, Josh. Lathan for the applicant. We don't have any uh, issue at all. I think Chuck did a good job defining the scope as a dialogue with our engineer as well. Um, we, we do like the LEC one. I think our engineer is, is, understands that one a little bit better, um, just the timing of it. Um, it does include a site visit. It was really important to us, I think, for this project to get a real polygraph sense of what this project is like. Uh, it does account for the dialogue with our engineers, which is such an important part as well, because uh, as Chuck mentioned, we were going to see this stuff in serial. It's more just getting it. Um, and then alternatively, analysis, assuming that we get this process, we're going to get it. So, from our perspective, the LEC. I haven't had a chance to look at the other, um, but if that assists the commission in deciding tonight. Yeah, I was happy with the LEC. I just didn't know. I just wasn't sure if those additional steps were needed. So, but I'd like to add as well. I appreciate your comment. I think. Um, Commission looks at it and says, boy, as we're going through this, maybe you don't need some additional comments back. I'm sure my client would love to get a, a refund, anything that's left over as well. Um, so. so it's only a couple pages. Can we take a few minutes just to read the Quisley Whitman? And then yeah. <laughs> Let's see.
What's that? Is it? Just, it's okay. You can ask me. I can't. Is LEP the, available? Um, Horsley went and gave a little description of their schedule and availability. Yeah. I, Has have any conversations with LEC given you an idea that they can get to this in a timely manner and on ours in a way that we need to? So, um, <coughs> uh, so I'm expecting to work with Ann Martin on this, and she's on vacation this week, and um, she'll be back on Monday. Okay. And she didn't say that she didn't have time to do this. I think what um, fitting this into your schedule isn't so hard is coming to the meetings that might be that might be tough. Um, so and the other caveat is that they're asking for a check uh, in our account here at Town Hall prior to them actually delivering any kind of schedule where they're gonna show up. So they want to make sure the money's here first. I don't know if that's gonna be a day or a week whatever that is so um, all right it looks like everyone's I, so I, I, I think they're both available to, to jump on top of this as, as soon as I they can this is a, a huge scope of work then no. I would worry about that now. Um, so I, mean, I guess a, I'll just say the one thing that I thought the horse we written didn't have a site visit um, I think basically you know, Included a site visit, I bet they're basically exactly the same proposal. Uh, I think I'm pretty close, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? So. No, we've worked with Wesley Witten, they're really good. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but I've, I've worked with Ann Martin before. She was here with the uh, Reading Rifle and Revolver Club during that, and some other projects that I've been on. And I know that this is something that she does well, which is to understand our regulations, understand uh, DEP, and so I'm sure Jose Witten does too, but no, I'm not I, sure. So, I mean, my, my take is, I was very pleased with what Horsley Witten did at Howard Street. I think their skill set there was in particular need because they had both the wetland and the, the drainage, stormwater. stormwater. I think Anne, she's right here. She, you've worked with her before. Like I, I, I just the the fact that the she's much more local, easier. You know, you worked with her. I, I'm just I would go for this LEC one. I mean, they, they look com very comparable, um, and um, I think they're both good. We could just say but, based on availability, you could put that caveat in yeah, your decision. Based on her ability to actually that she can meet this whatever schedule we've indicated, then mm -hmm. I would go for the LEC. I would go for the LEC one. Like the main difference between the two proposals is the site visit. Um, mm -hmm. See if there's any reason to not do a site visit. Well, I think they. Um, yeah, when I read that, I said oh, I probably was. I said we we don't have to go to the site to to evaluate the wetland flags, and maybe they. That that's why it's in there probably. Um, but we would have to go to the site. I think one of the things that everyone doesn't understand about this site is how much historic fill is there and the improvement that's going to happen when this project is uh, started. And so uh, even the people at DEP didn't realize that, you know, that was going on. So site visit is super important. Yeah. I think that was something that was enumerated at our last meeting. Site degradation and existing conditions is pretty important. That you're looking at this from 2D versus 3D. Mm -hmm. The difference between LEC and Horsley Witten is the site visit. So, oh, but they, they would add they would have added that. So, yeah. it, but there's a caveat. The Horsley witness says anything you add is going to cost you more money too. So, mm -hmm. is it going to come up to the same amount of money? And I don't know where the the <laughs> the people that have worked from in the, the uh, uh, Howard Street project from Horsley Whitman from, but you know, they have an office in Wakefield, which is the next town over, versus Horsley Witness in Sandwich. So. So they both said they're available, but you know, LEC is uh, you no. Know, so I can't fault you for any whatever your reasons are to, to choose LEC. There, these are both great companies. Yeah. So you know, you wouldn't. You're going to get the same result, and um, 
I don't think we should feel bad about going with LAC on this yeah. one. I think the applicants had a chance to review that yeah. proposal in detail. Yeah. We've all had a chance to review that more. I think we see these are comparable. They're both good Joe firms. indicated that he thought LAC, he, he oh. actually said because Wesley Witten hadn't got their, you know, their quote back, yeah. he said, let's just go with LAC. So. Yeah, so there was a question whether we were even going to get something from Wesley sure. Witten. I think uh, I would I'm suggest okay we go with that. that. Okay. LAC. I just have a quick question. Yeah. I, I might be missing it, but I, I still can't find the comparable fee in the LAC proposal. It's the last paragraph. It's, it's, it's six thousand dollars in a paragraph. In a paragraph, it's right here above the signature. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I'm not the only one who had trouble. I know, <laughs> but I kept no, and I'll tell you when I first read it the other day, I, I couldn't find it either. So the fee schedule isn't there. Yeah. Yeah, um, so. So I move we. We select LEC. Right here, second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. There's uh, one additional item on this uh, project that I want to make sure we hit tonight. Um, the fees have not yet been, you know, when, when you submit an application, uh, when you submit fees, and the fees have not yet been uh, submitted to the town. I want to, I, I understand. Before we open this again, I want to make sure that this is settled and the check is delivered to the town. I guess. I think. Yeah. I think we need a check for the fee. If you guys can make a decision, we need a check for the fee and a check for the consultant. Check for the fee and a check for the consultant. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so, if whatever the conclusion is on the fees, we can we can have. I mean, I didn't expect Josh Alicia to be here, but I'm sure he can handle the the uh, proponent side of uh, the discussion. Yeah. So, are you guys Specific able to submit the fee for the before the next meeting? I want to say I think that's not the client, but first minute of all, so I apologize. Um, I did get an email from Joe about 20 minutes before I showed up, um, but I have a the application. So okay. I'm yeah. Sorry, I'm not that helpful. So the fees for what they're proposing is fifty-one thousand dollars. Fifty-one thousand dollars and nine hundred. Almost fifty-two thousand um, dollars. It's a big project, and um, those are our fees. And I, you know, again, just like I asked you at the last meeting, somehow come up with a number so they're they're walking home with a number, and you you know, and they know what you're expecting. Yeah. Uh, so in general, you know, I think I said this last time. I don't think that we are, should be in the, the business of reducing fees for for no reason. Um, the the one thing that I did see, and I don't know how this is incorporated into this the the, the number here, is, but so the the J and the C numbers, you know, in my mind, that's that's part of them building their project. Uh, that's that's the the cost of putting what they want to put on this site is built into those numbers and I, I don't really have an issue with what's presented there. There is currently part of the proposal to remove this roadway, ramp, whatever it is, um, as a benefit to the wetland. We've asked them to do that. I, I think that's built into the 4,804 4, square <laughs> foot alteration within the 25 foot. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that's something that I see is that you know They've offered to, to do that to help improve the project. That's work that is, you know, in essence, they, they wouldn't do that to build their project if we didn't ask them. No. Um, that'd be something that I'd be willing. I don't know what the square footage is, though, like what that is off. Um, so that's really the only thing that I, in my, my opinion, <coughs> that I'd be willing to give up. Uh, otherwise, I think everything. Yeah, tip. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I thought this Main Street project was 24 units. Yeah, I, I looked at that also. It was a question that came up, but then I just thought that maybe only 18 are within our jurisdictional area. Oh, and it's only if it's within our jurisdictional yeah, area that's that what we it's, yeah. collect fees. Okay. So we have two jurisdictional areas, though, mm -hmm. too. We this have the riverfront and we have the wetlands buffer. Yeah. So we have the 200 foot riverfront setback. Any resource area and buffers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with what you said. I second what you said about the fee. 
So typically, um, if an applicant is altering the wetland um, to benefit themselves, you're not going to reduce our fees. Yeah. But if they're, uh, in the case of like Camp Curtis <laughs> Gill, way back in the 50s or the 30s, they filled in a wetland and put the two little bungalows on it. And then in the um, year 2010, I guess they decided that you know, that was a bad thing. They took the bungalows off and they pulled back all uh, all the dirt and restored the wetland. But there was a fee that was associated with that with $20,000. And we waived that fee because it benefited the wetlands. And that's the kind of, that's what we're looking for. So an example about pulling back that historic fill and how much of that has to do with this fee is, would be important to know. Yeah, yeah I, I just reiterate that. It's like saying, oh, please, please do this and give us the dollar 25 for every time, for, for every night, nicely that you make here. I, I mean, I, the only thing I, is I don't know what the area is. Um, but Ch Chuck, I guess if everybody on the commission is willing, like I'm willing to have you work with the applicant on what that number is, what that square foot number is, and remove it from the G. Um, mm -hmm. And as long as you, you know, you've, you've done a check on that number, then I'm, I'm fine. With it. As long as I get both checks at the same time, you're you're okay with moving forward with the uh, consultants. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have any? So I have the plan up, and the 200 foot is outside of the parking area. So it must be um, just a portion of the buffer zone, and that's how they came up with the 18 units. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at the plan here, and the, the 100 foot line doesn't include all of the building. Goes right through the middle of that. Is this it right here? Yeah. Yeah. So there so you go. So those six units don't count. Right. Got it. I do want to. I do want to comment. One thing I noticed when I was reviewing this. This is a little bit of an aside, so I'm sorry if I'm straying here. But one thing that the previous consultant had noticed about this project was, sorry, was um, that. Part that the 267 Main Street portion of the site already has a conservation restriction agreement. Did you? I. Um, it's dated. May 28th, 1982. 1982. It's on file with the town of Reading. And it appears to restrict development on the portion of the parcel that's greater than 200 feet from the center line of Main Street. Is that, is that the, the house that was torn down? The little, yeah, the it's that house. property. Is that 267? Right. There was... So back in that time frame, Brad Latham came before the commission and they were talking about rezoning this site for this very similar purpose. That conservation restriction was entered into as a conditional restriction at that time, subject to it getting rezoned and approved. They then withdrew that it just they didn't end up doing anything with the restriction itself. So that was all part of a redevelopment that never actually happened. So you're saying that conservation restriction is even though it's on file, it never got certified and attached right. to it. I think if this is off the top of my head, I think if you look at it, I think there is language in it that references it's subject to this reconstruction this redevelopment. And within the town clerk records there's notice there's actually withdrawal of the entire application from could the we, could we get some of that information? Uh, yeah, I actually have to, I have to grab it from the town clerk's office. Sure, yeah, so maybe you could just clear that up. Yeah, I mean, it was something that just popped out when I was reading one of the property history summaries. Isn't that also where the, the delineation between business A and, and single family 15 is? It, it may have been, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe coincidence. There's a line that. that actually is parallel to the center line of the of the road that delineates uh, uh, business A versus S15 zoning. So that may be where that is as well. I know. I don't want to go way back in the weeds, but oh, sure. it was it was mentioned in the report, and so you yeah. know, I'm just sort of thinking going forward with this permit. If somebody talks about 
It's, it's right Gee, here, can we talk about? Right yeah, like I was just looking for a clean. I know it's like right across here. Right there. Yeah. Filing an additional, you know, if some discussion gets to. So the restriction is back here. Want to consider here. filing yeah. another a CR? We're back in this little triangle. There, area. I want yeah. to know. Like, no. So it that's was set up 200 feet from the road, and that's what that is the um, the zoning that was business right. versus S15. Which is why so. the building looks like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> it goes right up to that. So it's sure. on. It's only on one property, though. Right. Which property is it it's on? That little triangle property? Ah. Or the bigger property? It's probably the bigger it's property. 267 Main Street. Well, it was for 267, so I would assume that the 267 is the building that, that little house that was yeah, torn down. it is. It is. Uh, so. So if that's the case, that, that little that triangle is triangle. not being that's beyond the 200 feet where your hand is there, that little <coughs> right. triangular piece, which is it's not being small developed. portion that's being developed then, that one yeah. little corner. Right. I don't, I don't know this that's is the first. That's not really a great restriction. That yeah. That's been brought up, but uh, yeah. Josh is going to yeah, get, get some, some information for that for us. I just want to know if that's really mm -hmm. a valid CR or not. And if it is valid, <laughs> I'd like to see what it says. Sure. You know, because somebody's read it and said it. So I think we have a path forward here. I guess from the truck, you're going to reach out to LEC to tell them we're waiting for some money. Guidance we'll tell them we're on waiting the, for some guidance on the money. Yeah, so we have the bylaw fee, and then we'll wait for a check. We're well, actually waiting for two checks, and then when I get those checks and deposit them, then they're ready to go. Perfect. Okay. Um, so this is going to be continued. I guess this there could be some time between the now and the next hearing. Um, well, it's likely that this isn't going to happen in the next hearing or two. Um, you know, I, I, I think. Well, I, I guess before I get, is there anybody from the public here to here for the, this project? Um, you know, I, I guess what I'd like to do is take this off the agenda until we've got a better idea of what the schedule is um, so that it's not necessarily um, Chuck tell me how that works again so it's a date continue it's a date for a date certain. certain so we continue to a date certain and then we re-advertise that they're coming back to the meeting yeah so they can however long this takes we don't have to put it on the agenda and then um, at that point um, that all this back office work is done and we're ready to come to the commission and, and talk again. Um, you know, so it's it's uh, get the fees. You know, we we already talked about it. So, yeah. And then it, they're just re-advertised and come to the next meeting. I like the idea of the re-advertisement. I think this is going to be sitting here. You know, I don't know quite how long. And you know, I think it gives the opportunity for public that are interested in this to understand that this is actually. So I, I just have to. Yeah let you know that it's up to the applicant. So I mean, what, what's reasonable? I mean, if we're going to put this out until March the 25th, April 8th, you know, what, what's, what do you think the timeline? So we would only put it out to the next meeting. If So if we didn't do this date certain, we'd have to put it out to the next meeting. And when they don't make that meeting, we'd have to continue it and then so on and so on and so on until they come back. So we can't back. continue it until the 25th of March? No. no. Well, you, you could, but... I would only go a month from this point. That's a month. Do you have any issues? With I mean, that would just be our preference simply because the cost associated, of course, with republishing would be noticing. It's a month from um, now. So Marcus would be the 25th. Yeah, there's a stack of... Pushing it a little bit further out if you're doing it's a month. And if nothing else, I can come back and report with conservation restriction information. You just do it till the next meeting and see where we're at. We might have some more information by then, and then see if this makes more sense. Sure, we'll have a better idea of the schedule at that point. All right, that, that's, I'm fine with that. Okay. So, we'll continue to, to, uh, to the uh, postpone. Uh, continue. Continue. Uh, Isn't it uh, March to two sixty-seven Main Street? There's no uh, DEP found. Uh, do you have a DEP file for this? You should. Is this not on that? Oh yeah. Other side. Oh. Nope, 270-0727. Oh, there it is. On the agenda. 270-0727. Okay. Um, uh, DEP 270-0727-259-267. 
Main Street. Right here, second. Second. All those in favor? All right, thank you. And that's still March 11th. Is a uh, continue track? Well, they, yeah, did they pull? I lost my, uh, oh, so that's zero Haverhill. That is continued. So the next item on the agenda is zero Haverhill Street. The applicant has indicated they're gonna they'd like to continue. Like your motion. Motion to continue zero Havel Street. All those in favor? I'll second. That's all right. All right. Uh, so the next order of business is a certificate of compliance 270697, 26 Mile Post Road, Dimio. How's it going? Thank you for being patient and no, waiting okay. along. Um, so uh, this. Uh, forces a certificate of com or looking for a certificate of compliance. Um, we did a site visit on Tuesday. Myself, Martha, and Chuck uh, went to see the project. Um, in addition, we asked Carl, who couldn't be here, to to go out and take a look at some of the vegetation. Um, we had some concerns about what would be a what was growing. And so Chuck, I don't know if you could show some of the pictures of, from what we've seen. So, so, the, yeah, so, um, this is um, from their survivability report, and the 25-foot the line is right along the back side of that fence. And when you went on the site visit, the trampoline was still there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, visit is from recently. Yesterday. Yesterday, right? Um, and that was a planting plan from the yeah. yeah. Let's see if I can get this thing to zoom in a little bit. So, Chuck, we have the as built here. Do you have the approved plan? You should have both. both. All right, so um, just I think we're, there's a couple differences that um, I noticed while we were out there. Um, the and you can kind of see it on the plan um, is the patio on the top extends um, further to the northwest, uh, west, southwest, I guess, um, towards where you can see the concrete bounds. There's this area here. Um, yep. So let me just kind of highlight it here in, in pink um, where there's some extension. Um, in addition, we went and looked at the plants. There's there's some that haven't been able to take, they're, that have died. There's the trampoline in the, the area where a couple plants have been, um, haven't been planted. And then there's a line of what was so called out as blueberry bush along the top of the, you know, just on the other side of the Versalock wall. Um, and right now, I think, as you can see from the picture, you can see me standing, that, that's that's essentially the top of the slope. There was nothing planted in that area. Um, right now, it's it's been grassed down to a certain extent and then left natural, and then you can see kind of the, the planting sparsed in there. Um, some of the, a lot of the blueberries have not, have been eaten and not, you know, not survived. Um, I actually went back to the old hearing, the video of the old hearings on this, just to kind of grasp what we were intending for this area. I think one of the comments that, I think Carl might have been brand new at the time, was that, I don't know if the blueberries will survive. <laughs> so Yeah, he was proven right. Yes, uh, that shows that he knows what he's doing. Um, so he did write this summary. He Carl's not here, but he was able to go out and about the blueberry bushes dying and two dogwood trees not planted uh, and they should be and um, something about the trampoline and that's where 
two or three shoves should be, which I, I think I said the same thing that it was under that. Um, so, so I think my big, one of my bigger takeaways from this and, and going back, I, I had to go back to our old meeting to get this is so, so everybody is aware I mean, we're, we're, we've seen this on the previous project. We had approved a variance for this project um, for the pool, a structure within our 35 foot zone. Um, and part of that variance was what we were expecting back is essentially from beyond this, the fence line and this Versalock wall, we wanted that to be turned back into untouched, you know, yeah, not necessarily not wetland, but but twenty yeah, so to reestablish a new twenty five foot buffer, right? This was essentially mossy, grassy area previously, and what we were hoping is that essentially from this fence line back would turn into this grow you know, an area that would could grow and thrive and you know, not be to be interrupted. I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, no. I, and I could actually just try to make it more yeah. understandable by saying that we usually don't allow anyone to do any work in that 35 foot area, <laughs> not at all. And there has to be a hurdle, <coughs> so everyone do, isn't allowed to, to do that. So we thought, um, and we acted upon this thought, which was you wanted a pool and you wanted this area to be developed. and by doing that, this lower area, this 25 foot, was going to be let go natural or planted and let it go natural. So, and then I explained this on the site, but the, the additional lawn, the trampoline, and the um, the mowing that seems to be uh, what your their landscaper told them they need to mow around there to in order to make the trees and the shrubs survive was contradictory to what we thought um, we had agreed upon. And then I also delivered all the information from the uh, certificate, the order of conditions to the commission, which clearly states that, what I just said. So, I mean, that's, that's really what we're at. It's just, um, it's, it's just the fact that, that you guys got something that no one else did, and the price was, you know, this lower portion. So we're, this is why it's, it's you know, we're back here saying, hey, what can we do to, you know, straighten this out? Yeah, so, and I completely agree with you. I think as far as, because I, you know, I mentioned it to some of you when you came, so we um, thought that we put the plantings we were supposed to. We have, uh, you know, Jack came out and gave, signed off on compliance, so there must have been a misunderstanding because we, we thought we were in compliance. We have left the bottom untouched. Yes, the trampoline was there. We looked at it as, again, it's not a structure. I'm not sure what the definition of a trampoline is. Um, it is there. I, I understand that. Um, and uh, But everything down there is untouched. We were told that we should weed whack it, and our landscaper does that. We don't because nothing um, is growing. We've already had to replace some of the plantings. Um, you know, I, I, I learned why the blueberries aren't growing. I didn't realize they were being eaten. Um, so I learned something new. Um, so, you know, I think we do have to plant more. I'm, I'm not sure what to plant. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> that moss has, has been there. So we were also told to put the lawn back again to, um, <coughs> that's kind of how we bought it, right? There was lawn all the way down. Over the years, the bottom, we don't go down there. I mean, it's untouched and it's been turning into moss because it is moist. Um, at least that's, I assume that's what's happening. Um, and um, the lawn was put there to avoid erosion, I guess. So not to, not to impact the, the plants. Again, I, I, I could be wrong, but, you know, Jack came out and looked at it and signed off on the order of compliance, so certificate. Or the certificate of compliance. So it states on your approved plan here that that enhancement area is supposed to be planted with wild northeast wildflower mix. So anything outside of that versa block wall where it was on the plant was supposed to be um, rebated uh, to six inches of loam and high organic content of free of stones and uh, then also planted with a seed mix of enhancement planting 
of Northeast Wildflower Mix. Are you talking right behind the fence here? Yeah. Right there. That's okay, that grass so that's, that's there. Question, because then we talked the other day, and I thought we said you guys thought it was supposed to be blueberries. I mean, I'm happy to put, plant whatever. It's supposed I need to, to be. It's supposed to be blueberries and this wildflower mix. Yeah. Okay. So on the outside of the Versa Block wall, that was supposed to be planted with this wildflower. That's mix. fine, and I'm ha we we are happy to put that there. I would ask that we don't do the blueberries. Um, yeah. You guys can suggest they something else. We don't want else. to feed the deer. Yeah. We don't. We don't want you to plant something that's not going to survive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, we, I mean, we're with you on that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I wish Carl. So here to yeah, we replaced a, a few of the blueberries. And he did. He, he actually did recommend did something recommend somewhere now. Now I don't know where it is. Yeah. He said mountain laurel. Mountain laurel. Yeah. See, those seem to be doing well. So if, yeah. you know, I, I think there's options there. Yeah. I don't know from my perspective. I think you could work with Chuck about what that can be. Okay. Um, you know, I, I because you know that I don't necessarily care exactly what it is as long as we are establishing what we yeah. are expecting to see there. Whether it's high bush blueberry, mountain laurel, whatever the case. And I, I, I just want to say whatever goes in that planting area, I want to get to the quantity, the number of shrubs that was approved on the approved plan. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fine. So, I guess I'm just confused why the um, compliance was signed off on this. I am also confused okay. about that because. Well, so what is that? I mean, Jack. Um, I mean, we Jack honestly thought we were in compliance, so. Uh, that's what because, I think that was, I guess. Because the paragraph, the next paragraph under so, it was constructed, then it goes to say. However, there's encroachment, additional encroachment on the 25 foot of 75 square feet. You know, and, um, you know, so there's additional impervious above, above and beyond what was put on the approved plan. And uh, the exact amount that the only thing that was missing for his, to complete the certificate was the um, cement posts in the ground. Mm. And once we put those in, he came out. I, yeah, I don't. Unless there's a plan that we missed or he didn't have. I don't know if he was looking at the approved plan. <coughs> because if he was walking it and he was standing here where it's like, you know, he, what he should have done is look, and maybe he did do this. I'm not. I, but he should have looked at this and said, is that shrub there? If it's not there, is it planted? Is it surviving? And then over here where this patio, like there's additional patio, he would have stood there and said, wait, there's additional patio that you put in that was not approved, right? And he should have gone over here and said, wait, there was a dry well that was discussed before. Was that installed? I better show it on the plan. Is that in? I just I know. The dry I don't know. The dry well, not, the dry well. Dry well is in. The dry well is in. It's um I think it's next to the pool. Next to the pool. We okay. Just outside the, the patio. patio. We were yeah. able to see the. Yeah, and from the, the walls. Yeah, yeah, you showed, showed us the little that's right. round it's just not part the plan. at the top of the dry well. Because yeah. I was looking it's for it. It's, yeah. it's yeah. just beyond the edge of the patio. Okay. Do you have a copy that plan that you chose? I have both of them. Yeah. So there's two plans. This is There's the we have Jack's plan. plan and then we've got the plan we that we're the so if you'd like plan. the a copy of the approved plan. So we certified to Jack's plan. Or? Well, no, this was the so Jack, approved Jack says at the meeting. He, he goes out there. He says this is what was built. He stamps that. And give him this. There's what's approved at the meeting, what's agreed to here at the end of the permit, and then there's what was done. Do you follow? This is essentially what was approved the deal that's finished. It's Jack. Okay. Jack. Okay. And they're thinking Jack. Jack. He comes before us a lot. This is what's here. He put it together. He helped negotiate the original order for them. And then he came back to certify uh, so yeah. that it was done this, according to plan. This, um, but it was not according to plan. Right. So, that's not an indication. Yeah. 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 The process to get a um, certification of compliance oh, that's that's right. 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 should be against the approval. Oh, exactly. exactly. Correct. Because uh, in, in our eyes, we don't know any different of what's 
been done or what should have been done except the approved plan. So when we go through all this effort of permitting, we finalize what's going to happen on the approved plan. And when we go out, you know, like um, a planting mist, that's kind of a minor thing. Um, but if, I, you know, if we went out and that pool was up against the wetlands, yeah, yeah, yeah. this this would be a different meeting. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So it's our job at this point to, is to certify whether or not the work was, whether we agree that the work was done according to the agreements we already worked on. So I can work with the, uh, with to try to get this back uh, to the to the approved plan, yeah. and and then go from there. Um, I'll be following Jack tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to let you know that I don't I don't think Jack's gonna. Uh, I think you know he's a he's an engineer. He's probably yeah. not gonna uh, no, planting, go out there and yeah and, and yeah. locate each one of those plants. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. I think that's the pushback you're going to get on that. Yeah. But that's something that we can do. Uh, I mean, so, he was on one of the plans, and go ahead and you can so I see. So I that's a landscape architect that's not here tonight. That yeah, I met, I met Carl are, last night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. He, last night. So we can work Carl and yeah. maybe three of us can try to get together on that. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that would be the extra plantings, which is fine. And, um, I guess the trampoline. So I, I think uh, if we're going to keep, you know, the intent is for this uh, buffer to go back to natural. It's not going to go back to natural if there's a trampoline in it. Yeah. I, I mean, the thing is, it was never natural. So it's not going, we're trying to make it natural, right? It was never we're natural. trying to make it natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, so because, because it was always a lawn. It's actually more natural now than it's ever been. The previous owners, Fertilized it. I mean, it was very beautiful and green. <laughs> a lot of people when I like bought to it. have a nice uh, green lawn in town. I guess. <laughs> so I would I would say that it's a little more natural now than it was because I mean you can tell we don't go down there, right? Um, other than the trampoline, the girls access it through the side of the pool and they jump on it, so they're not you know. Um, I understand it's there. Again, we put it there. I don't know what the definition of a trampoline is. If that's a structure or not. Or, can the trampoline come up into the grassy area um, closer to the house? If it was to come up, it would it probably have to go, yeah, where that walkway is. Like, um, right, if you're walking off the back right there. On right, the there's a, it says grass. Maybe yeah. the trampoline would fit yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. And I, that would allow more shrubs to be planted down yeah, in the mossy right. area. Yeah, I think whether or not it fits sun. the definition of a structure, I think the, the intent of that, you know, what we're looking for from that area and for it to grow, it's just going to prevent it. Okay. Um, and so I think it's important that it gets out of there. Um, so then once we plant, and I apologize, it's a silly question, right? So no, go ahead. we plant and leave it. We don't try and keep it healthy by weed whacking it. I guess I'm, I'm right. concerned, right? Because I was told if you want it to grow, weed whack it. So we did, but now you're saying, yeah, I, I, think, I don't know I what the right thing to do. Is I, think we, uh, I think if that was mentioned, it was just weed whack around, around each plant, but leave what's in between alone. I mean, it's moss. It's not going to grow right. too much. Um, I don't know how much mowing or whatnot was ever done down there, but but um, that's the advice we usually do in, in places that grow in more. So just take the weed whacker and, and, and go around in, in a circle. Uh, until we can. I guess once it starts to get... It's going to take it. Yeah, then you don't have to do that anymore. Survive without, they're so, going to fight out the... And, so and is the thought my, to not like let the weeds grow up and choke the growth mm -hmm. of what you just planted? That's why you would do the weed whacking right. around the base is to kind of protect it and give it so, the best so chance for, for to every we should do that, right? Because that's disturbing it. I, I guess I look at that as that disturbing the land. You could do it forever, but then you could just do it until the the plants are established, established. the next couple of years, and then just they'll then be fine. Yeah. yeah. Also, once the wildflower mix takes, takes over, then it's all gonna. That's okay, gonna that's you. gonna look like the way back, okay. went within ten years. Now, are they putting in wildflower mix? Or are they leaving the moss? 
Um, that's what was in the approved plan. It's wildflower. Well, oh, I think right. we have to put in a few more plantings on the bottom, and then. So does it say lot. they were supposed to remove the soil and then amend yeah. that, and then were supposed, they were supposed to remove the soil, put in six inches of highly organic yeah. loam, and then plant wildflower yeah, mix. Right? Grass. It's not wildflower. Oh, at the mix. top, yeah. So, so remove the grass. Yeah, I think uh, Norse Environmental did that. Came mm -hmm. up with that plan for Jack. Yeah. Norse. I don't know, but that, that's what it says on the approved plan. Is yeah. that it was supposed to be planted outside that first block wall with wildflower mix. Chuck, I, I guess I, I'd be willing you know, in line with what we've just said, I'd be willing for, to check to, if you're working with them on the planting, yep. to see what makes sense there. If there's an area that that wildflower doesn't make sense, and, and whatever will grow. Yeah. yeah. That's we native. Grow, maintain that slope, keep it stable. Maybe we can meet Carl out there. Let's we all meet yeah. Carl. See what we can do with, with what's there now. I mean, even if you left that stuff that was there, and you spike seed it over that, it would still grow. Are you talking about down at the flat part? Or are you the talking the slope, the slope with the grass on it? Both. From the fence downhill. Okay. I think we've got a plan. I'm, I'm going to keep yeah. it Yeah, let's uh, I yeah, think Chuck and Carl yeah. can go out. We'll come and up and with something. We'll go out there with Carl. Yeah. 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 And uh, <laughs> see if we can come up with something so, that works. Yeah. So, the patio, yeah. What about the patio? So in line with, I, I think Anika's brought up a, a, a great point, so in line with what Martha just brought up on the last project, there's additional patio that's within the 25 foot. Um, should there, could we be calculating the fee associated? No, we shouldn't be because this is not an amended order of conditions. Mm -hmm. So that was a different, they opened up and they, that's, you know, that's the the rub against opening up an amended order of conditions. You you possibly we can change everything. Yeah. So um, this is not they're they're just trying to conform to what we've already asked them. Um, I mean, you could say, hey, that's not uh, that's not what we approved, and but I don't think the fees are not part of. Of what you can talk about. Okay. So that 75 square feet, is that the wall for the cave wall? Or did you say patio? So there's a this area. Oh, you could look for the plan. plan if you want. I see it. I didn't realize it. You can not. Uh, yeah, the patio got bigger around the swimming pool. And it's beautiful. But it's bigger <laughs> than what was approved. <laughs> The, um, and in the 25 got, foot zone. So similar to what we just had on the last copy is, is more more variance. Uh, so what, are, so what, what are the options? This is additional patio yeah. above and beyond. I think what I'd like to see, I mean, we've got a planting plan. We've got a planting pr plan approved. I think whatever you can do to help invigorate that area is, in my yeah. mind, the, the reconciliation for whatever we have today. I mean, I think I... I the intent is still there. I mean, you know, the other projects that we've talked about, this is like, well, we're losing the intent of why we got the variance. The, the intent of the variance can still be kept if the area out with the, the 25 foot and below is, you know, we built something pristine. So I, I think as long as you're working with them on that, I'm comfortable with. And also to remove the patio the, area. Yeah. And also to remove the trampoline. And to remove right. the trampoline, yeah, correct. I think with, with those two things, I'm comfortable with what what ever changed. What, what's with what's there now versus the approved plan. Is there a time frame that you want it done by? It's like we can't. Can't. It's a spring. We'll figure out what's going on we'll first. Change it in the future, you know. <laughs> Somehow you'll have to contact people, and then I mean, I, it's it's up to you. If you needed this certificate of compliance quickly, then then it would be quickly. If you're you're okay with waiting, then we would be nice to have this all finished and done with by the fall. The growing season is, yeah. Yeah, so we got this bit of growing season now, can't do it in the summer, and then we have a growing season later. I expect you to catch this first part if it's. I do have a question just so I understand. Um, there was, the way I'm reading this, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
There was nothing proposed inside of the 25 foot buffer. Everything was proposed inside of the 35 foot buffer. But in the as built, it's inside of the 25 foot buffer. So that seems like a big deal. Yeah, it shouldn't be there. The patio that's there and anything yeah. that's inside that 25 foot line shouldn't be there. So it's, it seems to follow that it's more than just what was originally agreed upon with the enhancement planting area. Yeah. There's something else that needs but to be enforced. It's forced. additional mitigation. It's additional mitigation, yeah. I'm sorry, can you explain that again? Because this is, I, I don't understand. You're so it, it, in the proposed drawings, the pool was proposed within the 35-foot buffer of the wetland, but not within the 25-foot buffer. But when it's in the as-built, it encroaches into the 25-foot buffer zone. The and aluminum the fence goes along in a straight line, and, and, and the, patio the patio sticks here. out in a straight line, whereas the buffer kind of comes in a curve. Okay. And there's a little triangle that you're oh. sticking into the 25-foot area. Okay. Yeah, so it does seem like some additional mitigation is warranted. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree. Um, I, I, well, I wouldn't disagree. I guess I, I still would keep this in line with the same thing. I think what I would like to see, and, and I know this planting plan, the spacing was developed for growing that would make sense, but I, I think I'd, I'd like to see it on that, what is the 25, if I'm close on it, some there, but along that fence line, um, you know, whatever we can do to help improve and ensure that line, you know, that that barrier, that line, and create more boxes. Are the three concrete bounds supposed to be marking where uh, that 25 foot line yes. is? Right. Yes. Right. I don't see, I don't, I'm lost also on the pool moving. However, very however. I, can, I can show you. Can I, see, we saw, I saw this when we were out here. So. Do not necessarily. Do not if I borrow yeah, yeah, You can take it. So those bounds are not it's the like exact same line on every property. Areas, which is okay. all this so the ratio to our rate using those bounds. I don't assume it's always the 25 foot line. But on this one, it is. On this one. Okay. So, so, so anything so beyond yeah. those bounds yeah. should be natural. That was the agreement. And then yeah. the patio. That was the this order. This is just a problem. Problem. Exactly. Cool right. sticking into it. Exactly. exactly. So, so, I, uh, but it still wouldn't be the Yeah. The patio stop. Right. Is this your And the pool is angled a little bit in order to make this corner of the pool right. not even right. go. And this yeah. pool so got built straight stop. rather than angled. Yeah, so. I mean, it's only a smidge, but. So what's in right. pink is additional impervious. And it's, and I don't know how Jack came up with 75 square feet. I mean, I was just trying to figure out roughly based on that. Yeah, I can explain. I mean, do you the think that's high? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know um, where 75 square feet is coming from either. Um, it sounds like a lot. I don't know where. Stand by. I'm going to see if I... 7 by I mean, 10? Yeah. 20? Yeah. We'd like that area to be zero. All right, so we're out to the site, and we're going to work this out. We're going to work in that 75 feet, too. So, okay, that sounds like a good idea. So, I think you've got a path forward. Yeah. Um, it's closer to 200. I'll take it back. Uh, just yeah. 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 We just have Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. We could ask for a couple more trees. Something more. I just. No, I, I don't disagree. I mean, I don't. We, could ask we, we can't have this happening. It's like <laughs> we gotta build what we approve. It depends. And this is like two projects we have crossing. Though. You know, we're kind of in a gray zone where we don't. Some things we have a, an established rule of thumb for that we typically ask for, but we try to allow for flexibility. So that oh, the was building was stay the and they are so the accepted by the resident and fortified and supported and 
you know, so we need a certain amount of buy-in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. we try right, to make right. it. Okay, so you'll you'll call me then. So we can oh, say. Email. Okay, yeah. email when you're ready. Yeah. Maybe we could have that discussion of like. Let's just give Chuck and and Carlson guidance. There's a little bit of discussion. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, can the patio be a. Um, Permeable, some kind of permeable construction. I think it's already built. Yeah, it's already built. Right, it's as built. Yeah. Sure. While you're doing this, just I would look for some sort of mitigation factor associated with that additional factor. Okay. Now that I heard your feedback, I think that I can go out there again and look for uh, possible solutions. Uh, based on that, I'm not saying I'll solve it and we'll solve it the first time, but we'll come back with okay. a different plan and you can and you can kind of look at that and see if it works or not. Okay. I just want to make sure before you leave, do you have any questions? Yeah. Do you, or, or do you want to? We got a certificate of compliance, so I thought we were all set. So I apologize, that is obviously my misunderstanding. And well, you I don't think it's anything you guys yeah, well, you, you had don't a, have a certificate of compliance yet. That's the None of it. What you got was an as built for the, for the pool. And he, and he submitted a letter asking for a certificate of compliance. And what you're here for is to try to, for, for us to say. You have a certificate of occupancy for the addition. That's different than the certificate of compliance for the Conservation Commission. Separate notes of intent. So what I want to know is, did the pool do what you thought it was going to do for the kids? I have to thank you all, because it literally was life changing. Good. Yeah. I've had a house full of kids all summer long, but I know where they are. They're in a safe place. And I, I, I honestly, I would have done it all over again if, if I had to. In yeah. four or five years, you're going to look out the, the curtains and say, empty. where are they? <laughs> I'll finally use it with a cocktail. <laughs> but it was life changing, so I got to I got to thank you very much. Oh, good. It was absolutely life changing. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right, any old new business, Chuck? The signs? <clears throat> um, I only I only found, I uh, kind of worked on that tonight, and I just got feedback. But we, we have signs. We're in the process of uh, getting a quote on 10 signs that say, you know, no dumping, no littering, you know, uh, no yard waste. By order of the Conservation Commission, they're going to be white and red, and I'll probably have something for the next meeting to look at. Um, and that's that's what we have. And then I talked to the engineering department. We need to provide the signs and they'll install them and they'll give us the poles. So that should, that should be um, pretty easy for them to install. And the gentleman at um, number 50 with the shed, I'm gonna meet him this Wednesday and we're gonna figure out what's going on with that shed. And he's probably gonna move it or get a new shed and bring it to the front of the house outside of our jurisdictional area. Just a question about the signs. Um, I've seen signs that are white and red where the red fades and you can't read it anymore. Mm -hmm. Or are these going to be like a stop sign that lasts forever? I don't know how they make the red stop sign red not fade, but you know when it's a white sign with red ink, it becomes white on white eventually. Yeah, the UV wears the red. Yeah. yeah um, so I, I would maybe suggest black ink on white just so that it um, doesn't stop having its message. <laughs> it sure. Matter. It's, it's, it, what it is, it's photoreactive in the, the ink that they use, whether it's black or red, it won't fade if they're photoreactive. It doesn't okay. matter. So you can get an ink that won't fade that's yes. red? Okay. They have paper, but they do have it. <laughs> I didn't even know they used ink anymore. I thought that it was some sort of latex, and then they yes, just so cut, too, cut it, it over it, and they cut out, <laughs> they had a backing, and then they cut the rest. I don't know. All, all highway signs are not paint. They're, they're actually stencils. Oh, whatever. It's, it's, like a, it's like a peel and stick. That's okay. what it is. Yeah. On, uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Um, minutes? Minutes for approval. Uh, does anybody have, anybody have a chance to... Review the minutes. Any markups or edits? No edits on the minutes. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve the minutes from February 12th. February 12th. All second. All second. All those in favor? All right. Uh, I have a 
project from Keyless. Oh, yeah. Rail. They're just, um, I just got this today. I just wanted to really just get it out of the way. They're just saying they're doing their uh, vegetation management plan, and it's from May 1st through June 30th, and they would just go up and down the tracks and they spray. So do this I've sent year. this, yeah, they do it every year. If you see that symbol on some trucks, you'll know that they're there for that. Them. They just cut down all the all the trees in their easement. <clears throat> so when we were doing the Matera, uh, the Millet build on the boardwalk, mm -hmm. they were coming through and they were cutting, I don't know, it must have been 25 feet on one side. And they could leave some trees if they wanted to, but mostly they just cut all the trees and it was, it was amazing how, what they took down. So now they're coming back and doing vegetation management. Um, this is a, a map I've sent them in the past and those red areas, I, I don't want them to spray because they're in close proximity to streams mm -hmm. and wetlands. I don't know if that comes clear, but um, they ask you to do that and, and we don't have any vernal pools out in that close proximity, maybe at the Millet property. There might be some on the san or at Sanctuary, but um, that's also highlighted in red. So. Chuck, if, if they're coming in and cutting trees, can we get some reimbursement through our tree policy? No. <laughs> because no, the feds because give they them have to launch to do whatever they want. They don't just even have like, to ask us. Just like a utility line coming through town. Yeah, it's what is it, yeah. commerce or something like that? Yeah, all right. The commerce laws are um, allow them to come in. Covered under a number of waivers. They, they notified the engineering department and luckily the engineering department let me know and I got a whole bunch of phone calls as to, I, I met them at Willow <coughs> Street and yeah, they, they're nice enough to talk to you but they don't have to. They're doing what they're doing. They're doing what they're doing and they the way. Yeah. All extra work. Well, that you know, rush. you know, you know what kids do to stuff that's laying around beside the railroad tracks. Put it on the railroad, 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 railroad tracks. Put it up on top of the tracks. <laughs> you should work in this place. You should give him a. Just give him a call. But it's kid, kid Dave. Yeah. Um, if there's, I wanted to talk about one particular item that I saw. I came across I found out that um, that there's a, there's some talk of well not just talk it's on mass DOT's website of doing some road work on 28 and I don't know Chuck if you heard about that or officially through conservation at this point but there was some proposed plan to modify 28 Route 28 from North Reading South and put it on a road diet. Um, so instead of it being a four lane, four lane road, it would be a two lane road with a, with a turning lane in the middle for both available to both sides and, a, and bike lanes as well. And I added up the total width and it looks like it would be an expansion of the road width by two, two feet. And um, I just I just think about, you know, that storm water drainage and they would have to come before us for that, you know, to resurface and to re, to the expand state, the road. The state does come before us when they, when they do projects, um, but I wasn't aware that they were going to widen the road. I don't think that's... Well, when you add up their in the fit diagram where they say before and after, it says four lanes at ten and a half feet each. And then it says two bike lanes at five feet, two other lanes at eleven feet and or ten and a half, and then a twelve foot changing. Like you know, so when you added it all up, it was a, it was a widening. And I didn't know if that would go into the sidewalk or whether they're talking about 
to a shoulder before the sidewalk on the exit? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. There's a shoulder. There's a white stripe on it's a foot or two. I don't know if... I don't know. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> I don't know. So, so, so Matt's DOT will it. come before us if, yeah, if but something they're not going to widen the road. They're not going to take up the side. No, I didn't us. think. I mean, I don't know how big the road is right now. So, I don't know how much little but wiggle they, room they, they have. They just repeat most of it, right? Really it's 1025. No, we can, they, we can they, deal they with it when they the come south in. South half. They have the a south half. They're talking about going from north Reading south. Believe it or not, the stuff from the the railroad tracks to the stone and line is just a binder. That, and that was like a test, test cover. All right, I'm going to keep us going. Chuck, is there any other items? <laughs> I, well, I lost my agenda. I don't know if I ate it or what happened to it, but it's gone. So you tell me, and if it were all done. Perfectos, perfectos is all okay. I mean, what, what Perfectos I is still okay. You know, at some point, we're going to have to close out that enforcement order. He's pretty much done what we've asked, but I, you know, not. it's not time yet. Yeah, okay. So I don't know what worked, but something worked over there. Finally, he said, yeah, I'll, I'll put the chain up. What happened to the, the plan from the order of conditions? Did that not get out of engineering? Is that why that's No, not it's been approved. Forward? He just says it's so expensive he can't do the work. And they won't they won't modify it. Any other items? I just have one more question about the swimming pool people compared to the basement door people. Um, the basement door people, we were able to charge the $72, which was silly, but it kind of, it was the, I brought it up thinking that the swimming pool people also have encroached on the 25 foot and maybe we could charge them. And the reason we couldn't is they didn't ask for a different order of conditions. They're asking for a certificate of compliance, not amending the order of conditions. Okay. So when you put in an amendment of the order of conditions, you're essentially opening up a brand new permit and anything can change. So you owe all the fees that you would owe based on the proposed changes. Check them correctly if I'm saying something wrong. This is a closure. They've they've done everything. It wasn't they've a proposed paid. change, right? It wasn't proposed. It was they just did it anyway. They just, did it, they just anyway. did it and we're catching it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so exactly. And and so well, in effect. Typically we could have called to pick it out. Yes, um, th there's an aspect and bring of bring it back to what the approved plan says. Yeah. 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 Well, I, 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 what I'm hearing is that. I wasn't going that, down that uh, rabbit hole. <laughs> I, I don't. We didn't look at it with, you know, that kind of intensity when we we're out there. But I, you know, I read. Now I see what you guys are looking for. We'll go back and see see what can be done. Um, so ultimately, you guys are in charge, but you have to understand that when we made that, I mean, I, I would weigh that situation by saying, okay, here's 25 feet of the yard that they're giving up, and there's like another 75 feet that we forgot to add. I mean, I did the same thing before. I mean, it's, would it, if they said it in the first place, would it really have changed anything we, we did, you know, at the end? Well, I mean, wouldn't we have charged a fee for that area? <laughs> man, oh man. So I mean, you, that's true. I know. Think about that. So you ask for less, teacher. you overdo it, and then you get away with cheaper. Right? And, and not mitigating as much. Yeah. yeah. I think it's so, more the mitigation. We, I mean, we don't usually, the fees come up one time. And 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 not usually they they don't usually keep coming up. The last two meetings, but that we, we've talked more but about mitigation. Fees, always comes up <laughs> and, and doing the best for the environment and all that. But we don't usually just keep getting that you know ringing the cash register. All right. So, so but I'm I'm I guess I'm thinking you know if if we only ask them to put in exactly the plants they agreed to in the first place then there's no reason for the next people two weeks from now and two weeks after that not to build something bigger and... That, that part's your decision. Yeah. And the other part that's your decision is to say, hey, take it out and to get your money or to get the money, you would say, file a permit for that 75 square feet and then we would charge you for that. But it has nothing to do with this current order, which is closed out mm -hmm. and you just have the permission to do what's on it. Yeah, so they would, we could do like... It. 
almost like an enforcement and force them to open up a new NOI for that additional. No, you can enforce you them to take out that 75 NOI. feet and you can enforce them to create that amount, but you have to understand that they have three years to do it. So if they're, if the order still has three years, you don't have any legs to yeah. get tough with them until that's over. I think in general, um, yeah, you know, I, I think we had every every order of conditions has three years to, to have the work develop. So you, have, you get three years. And then the commission could extend it if they felt like it was needed. Um, but you can do any part of the job within three years. So who's the builder who looked at this plan and then said, well, we can just make this patio five feet Believe larger. me, I, <laughs> I have tons of experience with that. Yeah, they um, don't always read the plans. <laughs> okay, so I guess what I'm thinking, you're gonna go out there and talk to them about what they can reasonably put in, in terms of shrubs and trees and stuff like that. And I guess I would say, for my money, rather than saying pay us the $75, you know, plant $75 worth of more trees, in that area to make it have a, um, uh, you know, like the, the basement guy was going to plant that whole row of shrubs so that nobody goes down the hill. Mm -hmm. Well, let's plant some shrubs along between the two concrete bounds that mark the 25-foot line. Maybe they're not um, blueberries. Maybe they're something else that's going to hold up a little better. But, you know, actually mark, like, here's your lawn and here's your wo wo woodlands. No, I, I think, and I think Chuck's gotten that. I think what, yeah. what we should be looking for is some sort of mitigation associated with it. Beyond what we've asked for in this permit already, which they still owe us, yeah. some sort of mitigation associated with that. Yeah, that that would make and me work, feel work something into it. So, so, I mean, I looked at that additional patio. I clearly highlighted and all that. Um, and, you know, I didn't do a real detailed calculation of how much imp additional impervious it was, but I ballparked about 200 square feet. You know, 75 square feet is what Jack said on his letter, but that I think that's honestly the sliver inside, inside the 25 foot. You know, and if you think of it, like I looked it up just now, like the spread of a mature red maple is 40 to, to 60 feet. So, I mean, if we did like, you know, I'm trying to think of something that's the right compensation. Like if we said, if we came to a decision about how much square feet one tree will take up for area, you know, and we compare that to the additional imp impervious, maybe that's one way to measure compensation in that situation. Yeah, I, I think we need, we need, we need a mean, planting plan that will work, that's sustainable, that's yeah. not going to get overcrowded. That has know. their buy-in, too. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't get destroyed. I mean, buy-in aside, I mean, I think this we're talking about mitigation, that's, that's something that's open to the commission, <laughs> not... I what know. about the the um, the house up at the north end of town that was going to do the crushed stone pit to keep the water from going down the hill into the wetland? Um, does this extra impervious patio require some sort of a crushed stone border to keep the water from flowing and the neighbors all complaining that they're Basements are flooded. I, I, where, are you, where are you talking about now? Um, I, I, I know that one's Ten Gregory, but yeah. where's the okay, other one? I'm thinking about something like what you were talking about at Ten Gregory might be appropriate here. Not just planting a tree, but putting in some... At milepost? At milepost, post, putting in <clears throat> something so the neighbors don't complain that all this water is now washing into the wetland or is that underground tank thing going to take all the water from the patio so the underground tank is oversized i mean okay. that's one of jack's that's a good thing that jack does when he does his projects roof runoff. what's that it's only roof runoff. Runoff. yeah it is the only thing that's going in there is roof runoff but it's but it's oversized so 
anything that hits the patio is not going to that. But the patio had gaps in between some of the stuff. Yeah, so and it should be. 25 feet of lawn. It should be. A, it's supposed to be Z and B to absorb the water prior to it getting to, I mean. So it should be all right. It should be. Okay. I, I think, I mean, you, you've got a pass. I, I think ultimately I do like that, um, well, it, I, I'm not excited. I mean, I said this in our site visits, like we had two site visits and the two things that they were about were there was a permit in front of us and then they built something completely different. I don't think that's a trend I want to see. Um, I'd like us to make sure. And we had an environmental monitor on that site. And we had an environmental monitor on one of them. <laughs> Who defended the build out. Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, I, I, you I want us to, s I, I do like that. I want to see mitigation. I don't want that to be something people think they can get away with. What, what What's presented to us needs to be what's built. That's why we do this. We sent the, the video, and, and, you know, and I'll, I'll that never great. forget is like, Bill, Anika brought up of like, is this actually what you're going to build? And she For the came, patio. For the patio. And, and you got, it, this long it was that specific about... area, and he kind of scolded you. So, well, if it's on the plan, that's what I'm going to build. It's like, uh, that's that's what we need to set as the standard. We should be getting what we've they've yeah. come in for. Um, so, uh, I think I don't like that. That's what we're we're seeing. I want to make sure we're doing what we can to prevent that in the future. So three sixty four is not really in the same. You know, not, he they he they, just built that without ever at, like. He's well, continuing to build it without <laughs> really asking. Well, I don't want to say he's a typical builder, but that might explain the fact of what's going on there. But that doesn't make it okay. But you guys, you know, by all means, <clears throat> please say, hey, look, you don't get two side lights. Let's have a three-foot opening, four stairs, no no walkway, and that's it. Yeah. I mean... I expected that, a bulkhead. Kids. <laughs> We, we oh, had, you could have right. brought up the bulkhead conversation. So we had the discussion but last meeting, right? Didn't we you say, know, like, we'll come back the, with a bulkhead? This is the final word. I mean, I, I you know, you can't go too crazy. I mean, you got to be compassionate. But um, why can't you, why the difference between two side lights and a door and exactly. just a door, a with, in that situation where it was like already there and had the same yeah. kind of, like, yeah. line to the, the door old door house, now it's just continuing for the retaining wall. But that's the Seemed idea, right? That's he doesn't want something at access egress. He wants it worth to look talking right. about. We want too much. To I don't know. Okay, I have a question for you, Chuck. Technical question. Mm -hmm. Talking about as built versus you know uh, approved plan, etc. In uh, talking about milepost, um, I don't know if you noticed it, but there's an extra set of stairs that are coming down off the deck, off the addition, um, that weren't on the approved plan that are outside the 35 foot no build zone. But they are still within the hundred foot buffer. Um, is that something that should have come? I mean, I, that to me, is more of a, a construction deal. But is that something that should have been brought before us for a change? The whole change to the patio yeah, should have come all of them before us. Come before us as a change. <coughs> Even the stairs that are that are yeah. in addition off the side of that. Because you know how they have the set of stairs that go down to the side yard. Those weren't on the approved plan. Right. Uh, here compared to here. Right. Yeah. Did it say walkway in front of it? Yeah, it says yeah. walkway in front that's, of it. Yeah, those those that's stairs we're, weren't on the approved plan. Send them a letter. Uh, but they have, you know. And the walkway so the, sticking off of the deck wasn't on the approved right, plan no. either. So you're watching? Well, that's what she were, highlighted in pink for right. that whole area. In my mind, but that's, that's, that's you know, in the, cut, that's in the 30, between the 25 and 35. In the wetlands and you're the builder, that's when you go over so in my mind, like the walkways in between, the, yes. the stairs are just the outside. The right. It's their responsibility to maintain the and in. make sure that they're right. complying with it. That's um, what she was know, highlighting all that pink right. extra space. Yeah, we've, yeah. The homeowner can go after the builder. Extra space, it wasn't there. Because if the builder like had the said, I noticed the stairs. The stairs, so when I we went out in October. Well, we don't know that, that the those tests were there. The I knew they were not yeah, the original plan. If I was the they were up, outside the 35. They would go back. If we told them to rip what, out, yeah. but they would go inside the 100. It's, they it's would have to go back to the right. But the likely what happened is he said, this is 
Oh, this is your, your concept? Let me tell you how I can make it look in the back. What if we just add this little stairs? What if we just Yeah, so now that I look at it, that I would so have it's not just a minor called change. about on There's those not, stairs not because it's something that could have been care. picked up on the uh, certificate that of compliance. Right? It's, it's, and it's really not worth It's not worth it's outside the 35 foot. Okay. But I mean, where is that? It's outside the 35 foot. There's a lot of no structure. You said yes. Technically, the thing that comes in the first place is a lot of structure. Filed an addendum to their plans? Well, they should have asked me what I thought, and I probably would have said pick it up at the certificate of compliance. Yeah. All right. Which they did. On that, but not on the rest of it. No, I understand. Yeah. I just, you know, because I saw that and I was like. So I'm going to have a. If there's no other. Yeah. Second? Yes. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Well, because, you because, because we <laughs> were just, talking about that, it was something that I thought of when we went out in October, and now I see it not only...